I think we can start because it's one past nine. What do you think? Can we start or should we uh, wait like two, three more minutes? How many people do we got? Uh, 14 participants now. So I guess we can wait like two minutes and then we can start. Okay, so I think we can start uh, our workshop. Um, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I welcome you today at our online um, workshop organized by the West Pomeranian ICT cluster and Vitano Science and Technology Park uh, in Greifswald. Uh, first of all, one uh, the most important information, I guess. Um, the interpreter, um, Kamil Krzywicki, is today with us. So if you would like to uh, use the German uh, interpretation, so please um, choose the uh, German channel at the bottom uh, of, of the screen. Um, so today's meeting um, takes place as the part of the project, um, as the part of the as the part of the project development uh, of Polish-German cross-border uh, cooperation, and the overall project is uh, co-financed by the European Union from the European Regional Development Fund and the state budget. Uh, on behalf of West Pomeranian ICT cluster, I would like to welcome you. My name is uh, Magdalena Ławicka. I'm the chief operating officer uh, at the cluster. So behind us, there are, uh, there are three um, workshops, three online meetings, which were organized with uh, our German partner, uh, Vitano. And today with us, uh, there is Alexander Schwok, uh, international project manager from Vitano. Alexander, hello. I'm glad that you are here with us. Yeah, hello, everybody. And uh, thank you for the uh, warm welcome. And thank you for organizing uh, all these events. And yeah. I think uh, all activities are just a starting point, and uh, I hopeful uh, I hope that we will find the possibility to continue the cooperation also in the next year and the upcoming years. Uh, uh, and uh, therefore, it's really great that you have uh, organized all these uh, events uh, where we learn each other a little bit uh, better and uh, uh, how and we learn how to cooperate uh, with each other and yeah uh, that means uh, there will be sev uh, several other workshops also jo joint workshops and uh, i think uh, after this training the next workshop will take place on the 1st of june there's a baltic startup day and uh, yeah, every uh, SME is uh, very welcome to participate also in the Baltic Startup Day. Uh, it will be also held in, in English uh, or in German. Um, and uh, there will be a separate workshop regarding smart cities, uh, smart regions, and especially uh, how uh, companies can um, uh, be involved in these smart cities, smart region activities of the uh, regions and uh, how they can benefit from, from this. And uh, yeah, as I said, everyone is very welcome also to participate on this meeting. Uh, you will find the information, I think, uh, very soon also on our Viteno webpage. Very briefly, for, uh, that was a very short, uh, yeah, outview uh, from our side. And uh, I wish us a very successful meeting. Unfortunately, I can't stay the uh, complete time because I have also to organize a second uh, workshop. Uh, but I will uh, try to follow you as long as possible. So thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you for the information and your invitation. Um, so far, we have organized uh, three online uh, meetings, online workshops. So um, we had the possibility to um, had uh, we have uh, we had the possibility to have a matchmaking session to learn more about uh, some um, business, uh, some cultural differences, on, uh, also uh, from the uh, on, in Poland and in Germany. So it was uh, a really useful um, part of uh, knowledge for us. And also uh, we had the workshop on uh, some marketing issues uh, to know more 
how uh, we can um, communicate effectively with our German partners and how to effectively communicate with uh, Polish companies. And today we are going to work on um, cross-border uh, cross border, um, services to design uh, such a service, service uh, oriented uh, on the client. Uh, West Pomeranian ICT cluster, uh, as the main organ uh, organizer of the uh, today's uh, meeting and the um, whole project, we are the association of about uh, 80 uh, IT companies, and we help uh, we can help companies um, to facilitate business relations, uh, to support. Uh, we also support building partnership among ICT companies, and uh, among our um, companies there are. Uh, also some with German uh, capital or those who provide services on the German market and uh, companies um, belonging to the cluster develop a variety of technologies which can be somehow divided into following a hub, fintech hub, automotive hub and also digital hub. And uh, when it comes to their competences, uh, the vast majority of them are uh, service vendors in the following areas, uh, ICT consulting, uh, custom software development, multimedia, VR and AR technology, and also cybersecurity. Uh, when, it comes, when it comes to today's uh, workshop, we are going to work uh, together. We are going to design cross-border services. Um, and the main objectives of the workshop is to possess uh, knowledge uh, about tools, about methods, how to create uh, new products, new services. Uh, we, also, um, we are also going to have the possibility to acquire the practical ability to use um, methods and tools. And also the final result is going to be uh, the new cross-border service. Uh, responding to the identified regional challenges. So we are also going to identify and then identify some um, challenges. And uh, Hubert Deba um, is our trainer. Uh, Hubert is also um, uh, an innovation consultant. And as for now, I would like to congratulate Hubert uh, defending his uh, PhD thesis a week ago, uh, which made Hubert a PhD. So, uh, congratulate, uh, Hubert. Hubert is an expert uh, of the European um, Commission in the field of uh, human-centered design. Um, and also he acquired uh, knowledge uh, in this area about innovation and design thinking at the Stanford University in the USA. The main goal uh, of the... So today we are going to focus on um, um, designing of the service. Uh, so I hope that uh, by the end of the workshop, we, uh, we will all know how to design uh, a user-oriented uh, service. And uh, today's workshop is the final one uh, when it comes to the project. Um, the main uh, goal of the project um, was to achieve a better understanding of uh, German and Polish cooperation needs. And the final results the final result is going to be the uh, ebook, which is going to be elaborated uh, in the um, following, uh, following days. Um, it's going to be the concept for further cross-border cooperation. So um, now I can give the voice and running the workshop to Hubert Deba, and I hope today we are going to possess um, a useful knowledge and information how to design Polish and German service. Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Give me a second. I will turn my okay. Don't worry. My my screen on. If you need, please use the interpretation. I mean the German channel. Okay. Before I start, please let me know if you see my screen now with the title. Yes, we can. Yep. Oh, great. Thank you. So, uh, from my side also, hello, everyone. Thank you from thank you for having me at this uh, workshop. I'm very glad that you are all here and the day that's ahead of us. We will be able to spend on talking about and discussing how make how can we make this cross-border cooperation um, more effective, more beneficial, and more user-friendly for the um, users, as we will call them, on both sides of the, uh, of the border, because this is so important, there's no doubt about it. So this day we will spend 
on the topic of creating new services. And uh, thank you, Magda, for the uh, introduction. Uh, I'm Hubert, please call me Hubert. Uh, I am innovation consultant, but I wear many hats. I work with uh, startups and with big companies on, 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 on innovation processes. Um, I work with the government bodies like European Commission, where we are creating the uh, user-centered IT tool. I'm also doing a academic research on innovation, especially in, in startups, where I'm looking at the business models. So many things, but all are oriented uh, to the innovation and to the search of how a value can be created. And the, the value will be a thing that we will discuss today a lot. We will uh, look for the value, discuss how more value can be created. And if we find a right problem, and then we will ideate for a best solution, you will see that value is often not um, a outcome of big affords huge projects, but additional value may be found even in small changes. But if this change is based on the insight that we made about the human, that's always source of the opportunity, the, the, the value can be created with even small moves. And we will try to look for those small moves and maybe find the opportunity to, for big moves that could be continued after the workshop. But this is all ahead of us. Uh, I'm Hubert and I'm very interested who you are. So if uh, each of you could say just a few words, who you are, what do you do? It would be very, uh, it would be very nice. Maybe, uh, maybe we can start with the list that I'm seeing. I see Kamil Pilarski as a first person. Kamil. Uh, hi, my name is Kamil. I'm a managing director of Avid Technology in Poland. Two kids, one dog, one wife. <laughs> Hello, guys. I'm Michael Pinatowski. Uh, I work for Avid. I'm a sales operations business partner, actually, right now for customer loyalty. And uh, I've rejoined recently, um, like three months ago. So previously, I was also, let's say, creating a startup, uh, actually, between the German company and a Polish company for live and care. I don't know if you guys know the sector, but it was a little bit different than what Avid does. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I have two kids, uh, no dogs, no cats, one wife, and Hopefully it will stay for for some time now. So thanks for having me here. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kate. Hi everyone. I'm from Avid, and I'm manager of analysts. So I look after all services that are provided by Avid. And I have no wife, but I have a dog. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, uh, Jarek. Hello, my name is Jarek. I'm from Avid Poland. Currently, I am a facility manager in the company. I have three kids, two grandkids, no dog, no cat. Thank you. <laughs> you can see a pattern here, okay? Marius. Hello, everybody. I'm Marius Kulczyk. I'm uh, working for Global Logic, and I'm a CEQA lead responsible for. Um, quality engineers slash quality managers supporting automotive projects. Um, I have no wife. I have one kid and one cat. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alexander. Uh, if you mean me, I, I was a short uh, introduction. Okay, Alexander Schwok, working at Viteno, responsible for um, international projects. At the same time, the contact point for the South Baltic area uh, in Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. Uh, so involved uh, many of these uh, project activities. Having a wife, having a son, um, don't having a dog and a cat, but living in a village and having a lot of neighbors with a lot of cats in our garden. Thank you. Uh, Agnieszka Wielgorecka. Hi everyone, my name is Agnieszka and I work for West Pomeranian University of Technology in Szczecin for um, International Project Enterprise Europe Network and we are trying to help companies innovate and grow internationally. I have a, a husband, uh, two kids and one hamster. No cats, no dogs. <laughs> and uh, I have to say that I'm sorry because I, I can't stay for um, the whole uh, workshop, and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Agnieszka Wasik. 
Uh, hello, I'm working uh, in Avid uh, almost three months. Uh, I'm a channel operation analyst. Uh, I don't have um, um, kids, but I have a boyfriend. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Good room. Good room. Yeah, hello, everyone. I'm hello, Anale. Ich bin eine Kollegin. Science, Science and Technology Park in Greifswald in the very northeastern part of Germany. Um, and I'm most of all responsible for startup consulting. So I'm a startup coach, startup consultant, uh, innovation management, and those aspects, incubation, acceleration uh, aspects. And uh, my second main focus is the bioeconomy field. So I'm involved in a project dealing with regional uh, improvements on the basis of bioeconomy, uh, yeah, of the bioeconomy subject or so to say. So I'm involved in a lot of um, Baltic Sea region projects and initiatives also for for yeah, a couple of years already. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. And Magda, do you have any pets? Yes, I have one beautiful cat, a red one. <laughs> Great, thank you. So um, no husbands, no kids. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so now I know all about your pets. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know yet how this will help us in the uh, in the process of the workshop, but we'll see. It may be a surprise. Thank you very much for all that uh, introduction and how this day will look like. Since we are talking about the border a road mapping of the workshop seems, seems uh, appropriate approach. So we already started with um, who is who. Uh, next, we will go into uh, introduction of the service design and what approach lies behind the service design. What are the principles? What are the methods and what are the tools? I will present you all this um, ground theory so that we can go into the practical part. So first we will discuss what are the daily challenges that you face when you try to make this international cooperation. It is so valuable, but still there would be a lot of challenges that we face every day. And we will have a discussion to find these challenges because if you face something personally, it would be the best starting point for the further uh, design process. And once we map those challenges, we will uh, conduct a empathy process where we, will, where we will try to understand not from the process perspective or the legislation, but from the human perspective, what are your problems, what are your pains, what gains would you like to, to find in this new service? So we will try to understand our users. After that, we will go to the stage of creating an insights and deciding what is really the problem that we will try to solve in the, in the, in the following steps. So here we will uh, synthesize what we learned about users. And after that, we will go into the ideation stage where we will try to find as many ideas for the solution as we uh, will be able to. And finally, uh, we will present those ideas, those solutions, uh, of course, in the very draft state, there, it, it will be, we will see maybe some canvas or, or, or some idea for the process or some any other way of presenting this, the, the idea that I will, uh, that I will tell you about uh, in a second. And uh, we will conclude with giving the feedback and discussing how can we continue with the ideas that we will uh, prepare today. About the logistics. I suppose after this first part, after about two hours, we will make first uh, uh, bigger coffee uh, break. It will be 20, 15 or 20 minutes. And in the middle of the practical part, we will do uh, another break about 30 or 40 minutes. So this will be the time when you uh, have uh, have more opportunity to uh, to, to walk or, or have a minute of relax. But uh, a part of those two breaks, we will have uh, a couple of shorter breaks uh, because uh, working with the computer is not so comfortable. So we will do shorter breaks. If you feel the need to have a couple of minute breaks, just let me know. Uh, we can be quite flexible about that. 
and we will uh, finish somewhere about 4 p.m maybe somewhere uh, before 4 p.m but this will be the, basically the whole day that we will spend on this uh, on this process uh, just a few words about the etiquette um, please keep in mind that I suppose all, most of you will be familiar with the tools that we will discuss today, familiar with the approach, uh, the methods. However, please keep in mind that this is a training that, that's going to show you something new. So in case you have some experiences uh, that may influence some biases, please, please just keep your mind uh, open look at this training with the perspective that it's something new that may be valuable to you not only today but in your uh, in your daily work so keep your mind open for for what i say for what other participants will say it will help you in getting as much knowledge from this as possible it is important to build on the ideas of others which is best reflected in the approach saying yes and instead of yes but so today we want to say yes and to build uh, on what our um, uh, colleagues uh, said before please th try this approach it's it's very beneficiary for for all kind of workshops um we, the, the topic is quite straight we will talk about designing services however the areas that we will discuss are very broad because it, it, this may include some geographical problems, society problems, maybe legislation problems or economic problems. We need to stay focused that today we are interested in creating ideas for new services regarding this uh, cross-border uh, cross cooperation. So this is important to keep in mind, not to go too wide in our discussions. And because we are online, this may be uh, especially difficult to moderate. So please keep in mind, today we are discussing about creating ideas and solutions for cross-border cooperation, understood very widely. And uh, again, goes with the online meeting. Please uh, remember that the, this online workshop has some limitations. So, um, so let, let's try to make it smooth. I'm sure uh, we can do that. So starting with the easy, silly question. Let's say there are two coffee shops and these coffee shops are located almost in the same place. They are next to each other. These coffee shops have very similar coffee, very similar pricing. So what would make you decide to go to the one place and not to another? This is question to you. What specific things would make you that you go that, to the one place and not to the another? Please tell me. So the simplest thing will be just like a climate of the coffee shop and design, let's say not design, but the interior and, and you know, even the furniture, actually. So about the climate, so if, I, if, if I'm with my wife, I just want to go for something, I don't know, like quiet place, which is really quiet and just dim lights and just to spend a romantic evening. But if, if I'm with my family or just for a business meeting, I just want to have something more professional. And I think that would be the first thing that we can just, you know, pick, I will just pick a go with this direction right to pick the coffee shop so based on the simple circumstances you would choose the place with the appropriate interior design correct thank you what else um frank speaking i would uh, choose the the one where i haven't been yet so if i've been on the for instance the coffee shop on the left side then i would like to try the the, the second one Do okay thank you so so those. so so go further you, you've been in two places already and <laughs> for the first <laughs> time which one Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> then I would choose another one because I like really trying new, new things. Okay, even but but, but but yeah, this uh, kind of a um, area where it's located, like, uh, I mean, not the area, but how it's uh, prepared, what's the interior like? So it's very similar to what uh, Michael said. Good, thank you. So what else? There's no. Like if they're nice or quick or what aspect of the service? Actually both. <laughs> approach of the person who is selling you the coffee uh, they are nice and actually helpful i think this is something what i would choose for the second time thank you i, I will prefer the one which have the uh, better coffee and better hardware to make the coffee better machines okay better machines thank you, you I, will, I will add uh, communication style I mean, of the staff, 
and also um, Alexander Schwock has written Atmosphere of the Shop. Atmosphere. Thank you very much. So, um, uh, yeah. yeah. So for, for me, I assume that we don't know this coffee shops. So if I don't know the atmosphere and, and the stuff, then I would choose the one where there is a limited crowd. So I can find a, a calm place to sit. And the second thing is uh, if there is a place for my kids, uh, because usually these places uh, don't care about this, but uh, people really need uh, some cozy place uh, to sit with kids and so, so they can drink uh, coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Any more comments? Maybe one price. <clears throat> I would choose the place with a, a good price, knowing that I'm paying for the right thing that not too high. Too fancy. I mean, sometimes a place is very fancy, so the price is not actually goodly related to the quality that they provide. Yeah. That would be my choice. Thank you. Uh, Agnieszka, I think you started saying something. Yeah, the quality of the coffee, of course, uh, nice customer service. And depending on the situation, if I would like to grab a coffee when I'm going to work, so I would look for the line. If there is a line, then I would choose the other one. But the, the quality of coffee and um, uh, customer experience is, uh, I think, the, 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 the choice um, that would, yeah, for me, would be, would be the choice. Thank you. Any more comment? Great, thank you. So th this one, this went perfect. So you 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 gave uh, all of you gave us the best illustration that uh, that the product itself is important, but there are so many other factors that would make us go to this one shop and to not to another. And many of those factors we could uh, summarize as a, a solution that comes to a specific need or specific problem, like when it's a, 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 a work coffee, I would need some specific solution. If it's a romantic coffee, I would need some other solution. Uh, if I go with family and I have kids, I need some another solution and so on. And so that means that the value is relative and the value is based on what we first will define as a problem. And good companies are open to uh, researching who is the user, who is the human that will come to, 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 our, uh, to our coffee shop, for example, and what this user may need from us. And then once we know what he needs, we can think of all the solutions and all the uh, ways to deliver him value by solving the problems that we will define as and as we can thought initially that in the coffee shop, the, the coffee would be most important, the most important, of course, coffee is super important, but uh, it's not only coffee, but additional um, things around the coffee like services. And this is a great picture of what a bad service may do to, to clients. I, I, I wouldn't like to see some, something like that in, uh, in my place. So services, we traditionally thought that products are important and products are always important and they always be important, but we need to have into, uh, in, in our minds that there's not only products right now, but we have the whole spectrum. And of course you will find companies that sell only products and 100% products. And of course you will find companies that sell only services, but these are extreme cases. For all the other companies, which will be in the definitive majority, there will be always some kind of mix of products and services. Some companies may have bigger 
emphasize on the product or, or on the services, but in the most of the cases, there will be a mix of products and services. And when we are designing a solution for a client to make him super happy, we first need to define the problem and then think how to solve this problem, how, to, how this solution would look like. And in most of the cases, this will be a mix of products and services. To, to create products, you in your companies, I'm sure have uh, um, tested methodologies and you create great products. And probably most of your, uh, of your companies, most of you also think about how to create service. And what's uh, valuable to mention here that the um, corresponding to product development methodology would be of course, service development, which, which is called service design. And this is nothing else as a, um, a mix, a combination of methods that aims in creating new services or improving uh, existing services. So they are more useful and desirable for clients, but because service is always a complex uh, thing to design, the service should also be uh, beneficial for the organization that delivers this service. And there would be many uh, uh, definitions, but uh, how I would like to, to call a service design that this is a mix of methods that aims in creating a combination and, of products and services that, that, that aims in creating value for all the stakeholders. So this is the general, but also helpful definition that will help us in going further today. So service design, as all, let's say, modern approaches to designing anything, there will be, uh, there will be some kind of principles that I would like to, uh, to present you. And the first, which is not a surprise, is that service design, designing services or solutions is human-centered which means it is not product service oriented, it is not service centered, it is not process or organization centered, it is human centered, which means our souls, the source of inspirations and the knowledge is human. His um, desires, his problems, his challenges that he's facing in his daily, uh, daily work, uh, personal, but also work, um, uh, work and all the other contexts that we can find to this specific human. So what we aim is to define what are his challenges and only then we are going to the ideation mode where we are finding solutions. And as we start with human, we also finish with human because the solution is good only then if our user will show us that he likes the solution. Paper, will handle anything, but that, that's why in this uh, service design approach, we are testing with the users, not testing with some uh, official uh, jury, for example. Human is our starting and finishing point. Um, what is important, and this is uh, why we're having this workshop today, because most of the uh, design project is co-created. So we want to invite as many parties as possible. The work is based on working with stakeholders. So there's always a group of designers, and today we will be uh, in the role of designers, but also uh, in the role of the users for specific challenges. We always want to create, uh, invite all the people, all the organizations, basically all stakeholders that are, that are anyhow uh, involved uh, in the process. So this may be uh, end users like private people, but it also can be companies, uh, NGOs, um, municipal, authorities or any governmental authorities so we always look to broadly engage as many uh, as many stakeholders as possible because then we have this uh, full view 360 view of the situation the, the process is sequential which means uh, and as you will see the process is very simple and there are not many rules but one of the rules is that uh, that the process is divided into steps and each steps each step has its own rights. And we need to remember in which step we are and not to, uh, not to um, exchange activities from various steps. Because when we are in the steps of defining, we only want to define the challenge, not to look, the, not to look for solutions. When we are in the ideation step, 
We want to look for ideas and not to assess them because this is another step. So the process is sequential. I will show you the step steps. And I would also add the sequential that it's iterative because we will go through the first iteration today. And as you will see after the feedback session, you will already have a ideas how the second iteration would look like. And because most of you is engaged in the IT industry, I'm sure uh, iterative uh, mode of work is nothing new to you. Another um, principle is that service design or designing approach is evidencing. What it means that when we have a, a physical product, we can grab it in a hand and we see it, we can feel it. In opposite to that, services are mostly intangible. We cannot see it, we cannot put it on the shelf, and the services are consumed at the time of delivering the service. So, so this experience is quite intangible, and this is why we tried to make, um, anyway, some physical evidences, some physical artifacts. Like when you're in the restaurant, you, you can see the printed menu. You will have printed a receipt. You will have some souvenir that may be uh, delivered to you. Uh, when you're going to the hotel, you still have um, the, 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 the frontier, the people that will, that will greet you, and so on. So services are intangible, but we always try to make it as physical, as tangible as possible. And the last principle is that service design or human-centered design in general is holistic. It means, as I said before, it um, always uh, includes many parties, many stakeholders. There's always context that may be changing during time. There may be so many factors that we don't know at the beginning, and that's why we need to look at the, each case holistically. So we're starting from the unknown, and with the process, with the researching, with the, all the analytical work, and creative work, we try to make this context more known to us. So, I, as I mentioned, human-centered design, will, which will be approached for our today workshop. Um, so human-centered design is a, uh, is, is a approach that we start with human, we create something for humans and we test it with humans. Please tell me if this kind of problem that you now see on the screen, if this is a good problem for human-centered design and why no? Please tell me. Don't be shy. What do you think? So, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, please, Michal. Yeah, so just you know, on my side, it's, you know, this, is, uh, this will be easily, let's say, automated. That's why we invented computers, so we can compute <laughs> something and actually we don't need to be creative about this. I mean, you, you can automatize it. So everything that can be automatized uh, can be out of the service of a human factor, or this is this, this, it won't be a case for human because there are no emotions, no additional things, just simple cal calculation, com no, no simple calculations, so simple you know, computing of numbers. So that won't be a case for human, I think. That's my thoughts. Well said, automation. I will go back to that. Thank you, uh, Magda. I just wanted to add that we don't know what why is. <laughs> That's the problem. So it's quite difficult to understand the whole process, let's say, the whole calculation. Mm -hmm, thank you. We, we cannot solve it with uh, this amount of data that we have. <laughs> yeah. Of course, yeah. It should be Ukwadruvlen. <laughs> yeah. So you, you were right. And um, what was a good point is that this could be, if we had all the information, we could automate it. And by out, we can automate something uh, when we know the rules and we know that the rules for solving this problem won't change and after automation we have also testing automation once we have a solution for this uh, for this let's say problem uh, we know if this solution is right or wrong and this is the case that uh, that is very rarely uh, available for the human centered problems uh, because for human-centered problems, it will all, uh, often be so-called wicked problem. For wicked problems, there is often difficult to say, to define what is really the problem. We have some situation like there's a poverty or there's a problem with the healthcare or with the education or whatever other uh, social stuff. What is really the problem? What is the source of the problem? It is very often hard to define. Um, unlike us with the mat mathematical solutions, 
there is no stopping cruel. So we don't really know where, when the problem is solved. There's no stopping point like, okay, there was this problem and now it's fixed, it, it's perfect. It's, it's not so clear because the circumstances change, the, the people and the, and the context itself change. So there's hard to, to tell when we really stopped solving the problem and what, uh, what, what goes with that. Uh, the solution cannot be clearly defined as wrong or right solution. There will be solutions that, uh, that are useful and make some improvements, or there will be solutions that, will, uh, uh, that we will find after time as are not useful. And this is all that we can say. Uh, and the another thing is that you can have several approaches to, to solving a mathematical problem. And every each time that you will start doing it again, everything stays the same. Why once uh, while with the human problems, every time that you will do some intervention, you will change the system. So the next time that you will try to solve this problem, the context will be a bit different and the problem may be a bit different and therefore the solution may be a bit different. So this is not so clear as with the math mathematical equations, the wicked problems that are uh, mostly in the uh, interest of designers are way more blurry that's why this graph so-called design squiggle is so popular because it presents how the design process usually works and i'm sure in your industries you would you would tell that the process looks the same or you would even say say that that this line never untangles but but what we can say about the design process is that at the beginning there, there's this mess. We have some overall idea of what is the area that we want to assess, what is the uh, challenge at the very general level, but there is more uncertainties and more unknown than knowns. That's why we need a uh, regular process to help us finding additional information, thanks to which we can assess the direction and tweak with the direction. So after uh, the, the process and a couple of iteration of the process, we know finally who the client, who the user is, who, what is his problem, what solution could be fine. We have tested this solution two or three times, and then we know that the actual product design process or service design process may go into the, the final um, stage when we will invest bigger amount of money to create the, the final solution. So what's the process? Um, the process starts with the uh, research activities that will help us discover more about the topic that we need to, uh, that we need to work with. So as you can see, this, this process is based on empathetic research. We will learn about this uh, empathy tools. It's human-centered. I will re uh, repeat this as a mantra. We will always start with humans and humans is what interests us in this, uh, uh, in this kind of methodologies. And as you can see uh, at this first step, the scope of the project goes wider because at this stage we will learn a lot. We will have a lot of additional information that we didn't have at the with all the possibilities will go, uh, will expand, will, will increase. That's why the next step is based on going more narrow in the scope of the project, uh, because in the second step, we, we have all this information and we try to digest it, look for some patterns, for some uh, themes that emerge from all this chaotic information. And in this step, we are trying to, uh, to decide, okay, so, what is really the problem? What is the main uh, challenge that we should address in the following steps? So we go narrow with the scope of the project, but it would be boring if we stayed narrow. So another step is the ideation. So once we have defined challenge, we are using all the possible uh, inadequate brainstorming techniques to get as many ideas for solution. Of the uh, of the challenge that we defined. So here again, we go more wide with the scope of the projects because a challenge defined challenge is a one thing, but you will find ten different ways to to, to solve the challenge. So the, the the scope again goes wider, and um, unfortunately, fortunately, uh, we cannot go into the implementation phase to choose 
one or two ideas that we want to uh, prepare in a more detail. So in the other, another step, we uh, create prototypes. First, we select the, the ideas that are, uh, in our opinion, the most promising. We prototype those ideas and we present them to who? Again, to our users, to the humans that, are, that were the source uh, of our challenge. And the additional step would be evolution. That, that means that uh, which with each iteration, we are uh, looking on the process. We uh, are asking ourselves, uh, what could we improve in the process? Uh, but also, what could we uh, uh, did better in all of the steps? And what's important, as I said, that the process is sequential, but the process is also iterative. So from the ideation stage, you can have a conclusion that you need some more information. So you would go back into the research stage or from the prototyping where you have some uh, tangible uh, proposition of the, uh, of the solution you present it to the user. And from this presentation, from the feedback, uh, you learn that you need to go back to the research mode on, or into the insight mode. So this is iterative and this, these are not uh, full cycles, but you can jump between those stages which I believe um, uh, is something familiar to you already. And this is the point, uh, the, this, this yellow point is a point where we have an idea of what the challenge is. And from this point, we are starting to think about the solutions. It is important that on the left side of this yellow dot, there's a problem area. And on the right of this yellow dot, there's as a solution idea. And this is important to remember in terms of this, uh, the, the steps in the rules for the steps, which means when you are on the left side, you don't think about the solutions. You think about the solutions when you're in this, in this following steps. This is uh, important to remember. So the first, uh, the first stage, empathy or, or the research, First, we need to understand our users. And of course, there will be, uh, there is a lot of uh, solutions on, on the market, a lot of companies that will help us in, uh, in understanding the, the, the users or understanding the entire markets. We can buy uh, ready reports. We can, uh, we can buy a report that will be prepared only for us. And this is absolutely fine. But as designers, we always rely mostly on the things that we will uh, find ourselves. And the good thing is that most of the processes, or even all processes, as far as, as, far as I can tell, can be started with the work of just a couple of people that will do the research and find information about our users. And how to find the information, how to gather it, very simple methods. First you can observe people in their natural environment. So if you're going to improve the service of the supermarket, you simply go to the supermarket and observe people. If you want to observe, uh, create solution for some uh, company, you go to this company and observe. It's simple as that. Um, the, this method uh, is um, originally based on the ethnography, that comes from the social studies and the human studies. So this method is borrowed and it works perfectly because this gives us information about how the um, service flow is going, where the clients have some uh, challenges, where, where do they face obstacles and what elements of the process are uh, very uh, good for them. So just observing. Second easiest method is to ask people. And uh, asking people is super uh, effective in gaining knowledge because there's something about us that if someone uh, is interested in our experience and will uh, ask us questions in, in a non-invasive way, but is showing a, a sincere interest, uh, most of the people will give us information about the experience. That's why uh, all the interviews and all the methods based on interviews are so uh, are so effective. And the last uh, method is trying to to feel what this other uh, person um, is is going through. And this is what we call empathy. So understanding, ability to understand other person's uh, experiences position and so on. This is not an empathy in a, in, a, in a meaning that we will feel exactly the same because this is 
rarely possible, but we try to understand as much as we can position position situation of this other person and here you can find an example uh, of a guy this would be designer that was designing something for pregnant women there's no way that uh, a man will understand what a woman is going through but with this kind of um, uniform very uh, very weighty uniform, he understands, for example, the pain in the backbone when you have this, uh, this big belly in, uh, in front of you. So we look for ways to try to um, imitate situation of this, uh, of this other person, engage and try to feel the same. Of course, as much engage as, and as much feel as it's, as it's physically possible. So we use these uh, three methods, observing, asking and engaging to understand um, our users, the human behind our project. And what's important that uh, with the knowledge, with all the ex experiences we have, with all the knowledge we gain, we tend to think that we already know solutions for any kind of problem because we are so, uh, so experienced in this area or we have something similar uh, in our portfolio. And this is, this is a very simple tool, but this is one of the hardest tools to implement, to remember to have a beginner's mindset. That means that when we are going into the design process, we need to turn off all our uh, knowledge, experience, perceptions, because it will bias us in the direction that we already know. And this, the project is, the design process is not about us, but the design process is about the needs of the people that, that, that we found and that we defined. That's why we need to uh, keep in mind that we are carte blanche and this is not about our um, assumptions, but about what we learn like a scientist, uh, anthropologist, what we learn from the people that we are assessing. So we're not judging, we are curious, looking for patterns and listen to people, this may be hard. We we tend to 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 have an approach to talking. This time, when we are on the research phase, we need to listen and not talk. So, first method, beginner's mindset. Second method, as you can see, this super super simple. Another method that we use is conducting interviews. This is the best way to to, to learn about other people's experiences, approaches. Uh, or attitude or the, or the things that they are paying to them or the things that they would benefit. So this is the best way to, the, to assess how we can create value for this specific target group. Um, we always ask why, because asking why help, helps us in, uh, in, going, in, uh, in going deeper to the, um, the cause of the problem. We want to avoid the questions, the phrases uh, usually because when someone tells us something about what he usually does or what he usually feels, this will be a generalization. And each generalization misses important facts um, or specific situations that uh, ignited some specific emotions. So we want to avoid usually sentences. We will ask about stories, uh, very important not to suggest answers or asking simple questions that answer may be just yes or no very simple rules and we will practice them doing the, the the practical part of the workshop what's very cool and this is uh, a nice element of the research stage is that we are looking looking for extreme users for all uh, possible characteristics there will always be a marginal group of people that uh, have that have uh, very little of such characteristic there will be a majority of people which we could, could call average and there, there will be another uh, little group marginal of the people that have this characteristic very high and because as a designers we uh, we get inspiration from people from their needs and how do they solve the needs with the with the uh, means that they have there will be always a group of extreme users who may have this need very big or may have great ideas how to, uh, how to solve this problem. So they will have very interesting workarounds. So uh, with this picture, there was a case that a group of designers was, was trying to uh, improve the experience of people waiting uh, at the airport. 
And most of the people would uh, have a walk or they would sit and uh, read a book or listen to, 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 to something on the headphones. But there was, for example, this group of people that took their instrument and started playing a concert. So this would be an extreme group of users waiting at the airport. We could um, investigate what was their um, what was the idea? What was the um, yeah? What was the sense? What what the value it gave them? And then try to uh, move this value and 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 this pattern into all these uh, other people, this majority that didn't have this idea. But maybe we can be inspired by these extreme users to create a solution that will be uh, efficient also for all the other people, not only for the extreme users. So we we'll try to look for the extreme. Um, so these uh, were methods. And about tools, a very popular tool for the uh, creating services is user journey map, which is a very simple tool that helps us um, to, to, to first map and then understand how the process looks like, but not from the perspective of the uh, company delivering the, the, the service, but from the, this person this man or women that is uh, doing some particular thing like uh, booking a night in a hotel or buying new trousers or buying flowers or taking a cor cor course on English or on Ger or German language. So very uh, human uh, approach to investigate how the specific process looks like. And here we first need to um, define what are the um, actions that will be conducted by our user, what channels will this user uh, use? So will it be a website, um, a phone while having a phone call, or will, will it be an uh, in, in-person visit in the store or in the hotel, or will it be a phone call or any receipt and so on? So what is the, uh, the channel? And for each of those steps, uh, we will uh, have a discussion. Is it a positive experience while having this step or this is a negative experience? And as you can imagine, all the negative experiences that we will uh, identify will be uh, opportunities for us to, to improve the service. Uh, if we reduce the number of the unpleasant moments, the, the user will be satisfied. And there will be a lot of examples of the user journey map. This is uh, one of the first uh, I found, as you can see, uh, uh, map for the online uh, shopping. We can see that there are um, consecutive steps uh, going, um, driving this service further. And for each of the steps, we can think if this step is conducted well or, or if there are some areas for the improvements. So user journey maps. Personas are very popular uh, tools and the persona is a um, composite uh, of a characteristics for a specific target group and this uh, this composite character uh, will give us an overall picture picture of what are the needs of a specific target groups what are the problems what are the opportunities uh, to make it more human like we we often uh, select some picture, give some specific name to this person so we can so so we can feel more like it's a real person that we will refer to. But this is not a one specific real person that, for example, we found during the research phase, but this is a composite that will tell that will show us the archetype of, um, so of some specific target group. So this uh, tool is very often used. But the another tool that I like very much is called Empathy Map, and it's very popular. And this is uh, a simple visual tool that, that helps us uh, in synthesizing, in clustering the information that we will receive during the research phase. And originally, the Empathy Map uh, was um, assessing four fields. What do our clients see? What do our clients um, hear? what do our clients say and what do our clients do so we could um, write all the information und from... wir können alle diese informationen die wir hier aufgeschrieben haben äh, analysieren und nach einiger zeit wurde es dieses Werk... this is the field number two so what 
this client need to do or what are the jobs that this client have to done so what specific outcomes does does he or she need to achieve because this is absolute starting point for understanding uh, needs of the of the client what this client really needs what does he need to achieve and additionally what are his pains so what is he missing what does he complain about uh, what of the solutions that are available on the market does he already use but does not satisfy him completely so what are the pains and finally what would be the possible gains what would make this client um, happy even more so what would be the additional value that would be nice to have we could call it so empathy map is very helpful tool at the uh, empathy stage at the research stage so initial stage of the design process and let's say we have conducted our um, research interviews we have made some desk research we've got some uh, secondary information we've got our primary information we know a lot about our clients uh, we have discussed the, the client journey so we know where, our, where, where there are the down points of the process we've got idea what is really the pain for the client now is the time to define what the problem really is so now we're going into the second stage of the process where we'll define the problem and let's uh, let's stick with this uh, example maybe maybe you know it there was a case that greece had a problem with uh, with the tourists that um, at these uh, antique monuments tourists would take rocks which which were elements of this this monuments and this was absolutely no good because if uh, greece greek authorities wouldn't stop that after five ten or hundred years those monuments would disappear because they would be disassembled by tourists that took rock by rock so how could we solve this problem what do you think how could we solve this problem limit the number of tourists yes thank you what else put a fence around the monument or electric fence even <laughs> why not more? maybe try to sell kind of uh, souvenirs resembling the rocks from this particular place thank you thank you yes what else so normally i would i would say educate people but it's it is the long-term um process so i guess uh, maybe put some monitoring stuff some equipment some cameras that's just one of the ideas perfect more ideas wait the people before and after visit. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> so this is, a, uh, this is a good question, but the trick is that before we think of solution, we should uh, have a consensus what the problem is really about, because we can see what are the circumstances that tourists are taking those rocks. But what really is the problem? What is the cause of this situation? And the solutions that you proposed, of course, all of them are good solutions, but the, the solution will be really effective only if this is a solution for the right problem. Um, if the problem, with, if we define problem as a lack of education and lack of the imagination of the tourists that this will make those monuments uh, hurt, the solution would be some educational campaign if we thought the problem is that the people are uh, hardly speaking just thieves we could make some fences me we could make some cameras that would allow us to find those thieves but maybe uh, and i think that was alexander the the maybe the problem is that people have not the chance to get a right souvenir from from this place so they are taking the souvenir that's available to them which may be element of the monument so if we define the problem in this way people have no chance to have a satisfying souvenir then we can think of solutions and one of the solutions may be a, a shop that would uh, sell not some um, 
fake rocks made from the concrete that everybody would know that this is fake rocks but maybe those greek authorities could look for the monuments that are falling apart this way or another and they they could collect those kind of rocks and sell it in the shop and all those rocks would be certified that this is not just a fake uh, concrete uh, piece of uh, piece of rock but this is a real ancient greek rock for example with, with a certify uh, let's say but another solution that could be made uh, if we defined the problem that people want to have uh, a piece of history in their home if we define the problem in this manner a solution could be that uh, the area of this antique monument would be filled with fake concrete rocks and once tourists would know that all those rocks that are laying uh, in the neighborhood of the monument is not real, but it's just uh, concrete from, from China, there would not feel the need to take this rock because this is not real. So we could go into this souvenir kiosk or we could go into uh, using fake cement uh, uh, concrete rocks that would be laying all over the, the antique monument. So even if tourists took it, they would not took the real antique rock, but they would regal some, they would they would take some Chinese uh, concrete. And what's the good twist in that? That once tourists will know that the rocks that laying all around this monument are not real, would they take it? All the guides would tell uh, tourists that these rocks are not real these rocks are fake because the real uh, rocks was stolen and to make the character to, to keep the character of the place authorities uh, left all over the place fake rocks would anyone take it probably but still that will be worth to have this fake rocks because majority of that wouldn't be stolen yeah exactly so uh, this is a, a, an example that show us how tricky is defining the, the challenge. Then there, there may be a, many possible solutions to the problem, but based on the problem that we will choose as the right problem that we want to solve, the solutions may be very different. We, we may start with the security cameras, but we may finish with, uh, with using fake uh, concrete rocks all over the place. So that's why we need to uh, have a time and define the challenge because the challenge will influence solution. And what's important, uh, we may also find at the uh, prototyping or the testing phase that the solution that we present does not resonate as we expected with the clients. And this may be an information for us that we need to go back to the defining stage and think about uh, the challenge again. Maybe we uh, define the challenge somehow wrong. And this is absolutely normal with this kind of processes. A very useful tool to use in the defining stage is so-called point of view, which uh, is a simple sentence that will help us in uh, reframing all that we know about the circumstances, about the challenge, and reframe it into actionable sentence that will help us uh, make an ideation process in the next move. So this is a, uh, a pattern that we will fill with the uh, with the words based on the research pro, uh, process. And as you can see, the, this uh, this uh, POV could uh, sound like young parents. Young parents need a way to quickly calm down a crying infant because sleepless night makes him anxious or inefficient at work. So in this POV, there's always a target group, um, the person that has some specific problem, uh, need of that person. We need to be clear what is the problem for this person. And we always try to find some insight. The less obvious the insight is, the better. And once we have this point of view defined, and it will be your task in the, in the practical phase that you will have a research first, you will make an interview, and based on the interview, we need to uh, have a consensus to the point of view. So what is really, who is really our um, user, and what is really this user's problem that we want to, that we want to solve? So point of view. 
And once we have the point of view ready, that means we are clear about what the challenge is, we can go into the process, the stage of the ideation. So the process of creating solutions for the, for the challenge that we defined. And this is very important. And this is always um, difficult at the beginning that we already learned uh, uh, and teach that the mistakes are not very welcome. We should be right for the right the first time. And if we are not right, it's some kind of failure. It is a completely different approach because this, this approach assumes that we will not be right, that we will make failures in the research process, in the definition pro stage, in the ideation stage, there will be a lot of failures. And one of the way to make this process more effective is generating many ideas of which 95% will be not adequate, not effective, or maybe stupid, but we still want to have this lot of ideas because one of these ideas may be the idea that we are looking for, or one of those ideas may make our colleague think of another idea because we are building on, on another people's ideas. So we want to have as many ideas uh, as possible. And about the failures, it is worth to say that once I was in the, in the D school at Stanford University, the D school is one of the pioneers in this human-centered approach. Um, we had a case study and, and visit study of all the, of, of all the places and, and, and the classes and so on. And what was very important thing for them that they emphasized is that once they have classes with students on design thinking, the first assessment, the first project that students need to deliver is uh, structured in a way that this is impossible to deliver this project on time and with the uh, outcome that was expected. They, get, they give them so big scope of the project and they give them so little time that this is important to succeed. The first project is to make them fail. And the, the, thing, the, the big thing that they learned the students that during the design processes, you will fail many times and the failure is a natural part of the process. So you want to fail quickly to learn about what doesn't work and to quickly go back to the, to the steps that uh, may require some uh, adjustments to go back to this uh, to the, go back to this process and try again and again and again so uh, this is natural uh, in this process that we will make failures and we want to uh, be creative to, to to get even crazy ideas to increase the chances that the process will eventually will work so we want to create as many ideas as possible and there is many brainstorming tools that uh, there would be no time to discuss uh, them today but we have tools like opposite thinking analogy thinking the thinking hats and so on uh, and these are resources are available if you'll be interested after the workshop just let me know i will be happy to to provide you with all with more information but today we will stick with two one is the brainstorm which uh, which is up obviously known to all of us but uh, as i observed dur during uh, years of workshop that we tend to change the brainstorm so it so it's more like our education that we want to have many ideas but we are challenging the the ideas uh, on the go and there's no room for this creative um creative uh, flow with the ideas that may be crazy or stupid and this is what we try to do in this brainstorming approach there we are really going for quantity not for the quality uh, we are not elaborating the, the the ideas at the stage of the brainstorming but we are trying to uh, use keywords or headlines if you wish and this is important that we are building our, on ideas of others this is super, uh, super easy uh, exercise to explain, but it was super difficult for, for the people that I tried it with. The, the exercise, yes, and. There's this exercise that you have a discussion, some mini brainstorming session in a two people group. And there's a rule that the only thing you can say at the beginning of your answer is yes, and, instead of yes, but. When you're saying but, you will be challenging somehow the the the, the, the idea. You will uh, you will be pointing so, so 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 weaknesses. And if you say yes, and you need to 
respond to the answer of your colleague and build on this uh, on on this answer i highly uh, encourage you today to use the yes and approach and even if it will be fun try to use the yes and approach and what's uh, what's more the fair judgment because judgmenting it making making all those uh, uh, judgments is 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 very typical in the business environment but this process um, is uh, solid in the, in this point and this process expects that we will defer from judgment and go even crazy go wild with the ideas we will of course assess those ideas in the following steps but once you are in the ideation stage you are not assessing you are not judging but you are building on ideas of other people and trying to go with as many ideas as possible to generate as many uh, as many potential solutions and the second method that we will use in this ideation stage is so called how might we questions a short questions that will help us with uh, uh, with directing the brainstorming session in the idea in the direction that is um, that is uh, good for good for us and as 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 this as the statement says helfen. wie können wir etwas tun und da gibt es sehr viele angehensweise die wir benutzen wollen uh, for the pov that i just presented you would be how might we help young parent to quickly calm down a crying infant because sleepless night make this parent anxious at work so this would be the, the simplest how might we question this is absolutely fine but we can also use this additional tactics like um, amplify the good we, we, but by good we would uh, mean here this uh, baby calms down so how might we make baby calms down immediately and this would be this would it would be the question that helps us in going to the brainstorming remove the bed so the bed would be um, being anxious how might we help young parents not being anxious at work despite not sleeping for example explore the opposite the the question is that uh, after the crying uh, parent is tired so how make me how can we make how might we make a parent happy after unslept night question the assumption assumption is that uh, the the baby needs uh, calming down how make how can we make how might we make that baby doesn't need to be calmed and so on uh, maybe the analogy analogy the the thing is that the parent after unslept night is uh, tired so we would find the analogy when after unslept night uh, a person is satisfied so we would go to analogy and what i now find is that if i go to the dancing i am not sleeping at night but does it that doesn't make me anxious so how can we make uh, how how might we make parent uh, happy in work like he was in the uh, dancing so we are looking for the how might we questions and when we run out of the, the, the ideas that we will naturally have in our head, and you will have naturally 5, 10, 15, 20 ideas without any uh, external helps, then we can go with the how might we questions that will ignite the brainstorming and do, will move the brainstorming in the direction that is interesting for us. So how might we questions? And let's say we are after the... Uh, we are after this... Um, ideation session and we go into the um, process of the prototyping so once we have this many many ideas what we will do is we will uh, group similar ideas because not every idea from this 100 concepts will be totally different uh, there will be ideas that will be in some way similar so what we would go, we would group those similar ideas and we would call clustering ideas. And um, then we would have a discussion which of these um, ideas are for the time being the most pr um, promising to develop. And we will do a, a dot voting. You will, you will decide which idea is most promising and then we can go into the prototyping stage.
And for the prototyping, the the the, the main uh, the main rule is that in this design approach, the rule is that you can prototype everything. You can of course prototype products, tangible products, but also digital products. You can um, design and prototype spaces, and this is the case that is. Uh, very popular recently across libraries that the libraries uh, is a very traditional business but all the li librarians tend to be more user centered and they try to um, tweak the space to make it more user friendly but also this design approach for spaces is used in the in the cities on the streets on the on the on the commercial buildings and so on and also you can design services obviously for those various kinds of um, of the type of the solution there will be different um, prototyping uh, tools many of those total prototyping tools regarding the digital solutions i i'm sure you already know but even the, a piece of paper uh, in a pen is also a prototyping tool that will help us to make our uh, idea tangible at the very early stages of the prototyping process so we want to make our idea that may be perfect here in our heads, but it's intangible until we make it in any way tangible. And once it's tangible, we can give it to our target user, to the human that was uh, the reason for starting the design project. And we can check whether that he likes the solution uh, or he doesn't like it. Uh, is is it re is it resonating with what we believed was the problem or, or not? So this is an important point, and there's no sense with this approach in pushing a solution further after an unsuccessful uh, unsuccessful test. If our user told us or showed us, even it's more important that the solution does not resonate with his need. We just need to go back to some previous step of steps of the process, and it's absolutely natural. And the tools that are commonly used for the prototyping uh, at those early stages are, for example, business model canvas that I'm sure um, most of you already know, which is a very simple visual tool to describe the logic of the of the business, but not only of the business. Uh, we would say describe logic of each venture. It doesn't have to be a, a, a full-grown business. It, it, it can be an adventure or initiative. It's, each initiative will have some underlying logic of creating and delivering value. And especially for the complex cases that we will have uh, regarding economic interaction or human interaction, there will always be some logic of creating and delivering value. So that's why Business Model Canvas is so helpful. Another uh, helpful tool uh, strictly related to the service design would be the service blueprint, which is uh, a kind of more sophisticated client journey map, uh, like I presented to you before, because here we would um, uh, identify the moments, some specific moments, and we would um, elaborate what is the physical element with each specific moment, what is the action that client do. But unlike with the client journey, we would also um, discuss what the service, uh, the person that is delivering service do, and also what has to be done on the backstage because not everything is visible which is clear and in the service blueprint we are also discussing what needs to be available in the backstage so uh, the company representative can make the moves and the client uh, can uh, can interact so service blueprint is uh, is a very helpful tool maybe you will uh, be willing to, to to try this tool today and this is a simple example of how the using uh, and uh, and going into hotel could look like so you can see that the client would make a reservation and then would come to the hotel give the bags check in get keys and so on and for each of the steps we can see also the physical artifacts that are important at this stage and also would what would the repre re visible representative of the company do and also would what need to be working available and the so-called backstage that the process is uh, it is fine to be delivered. So what do we need to, to for this service to be feasible and also to, to be viable? Uh, at this beginning, at the closing of this section, just 
let me present you uh, two studies which are very illustrative for the for this process <clears throat> the first study case study that i really like comes from um, denmark it's called good kitchen and it, in this uh, in this project designers were, were were working on the challenge that despite denmark being a rich country uh, with good economic situation uh, a lot of elderly people were poorly nourished so despite that the country is quite quite rich there was a lot of uh, elderly people that didn't eat well and had problems because of this this poor nutrition and the municipal government didn't understand the situation because there was a public catering service available there was a food meals that could be delivered to these elderly people but it wasn't very popular there was a chance and these people didn't want to use the service that was available to them and they were poorly nutrished and what was the problem this is this kind of this wicked problem what what is really the problem these authorities didn't know so the first idea was to uh, to hire a marketing agency and the first idea was to make a new branding to make uh, to make all this visual identity more uh, <coughs> sorry, this visual identity uh, more attractive uh, and this would solve the problem. But this wasn't really the good solution. And I will keep you uh, unsure what was the solution because now we, make them, now we need to make just three or four minutes uh, of the pause so, uh, so our uh, interpreter, may, may, interpreter may have a deep breath because there was a lot of words already said. So just please uh, hold on for three, four minutes. Would this be fine? Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, I suggest we move further because we're almost at the end of this first, um, first part of this, uh, of this workshop. There's actually this case study, another case study, and, and then there will be a 15 minute break. So uh, just please let me know if you are here, Mr. Interpreter, uh, can we start just, just a couple of minutes be, before the another break? Okay, Hubert, I guess we can start because our interpreter also agrees uh, to start. Okay, so we stopped at the, uh, at the stage where the municipal authorities of this Holstebro um, town wanted to hire a marketing agency to make the new visual identity to make a marketing campaign of the of the service with the assumption that once this service looks better is better uh, promoted in the local media it will be more popular so they uh, jumped strictly to the solution we will make new visual identity and to be um, uh, to be in line with the approach that we are discussing today before we before we um, create some ideas for solution we first need to try to understand the user and define what is really the problem and to make that a group of uh, designers uh, conducted a quite a broad research uh, process uh, and how do you think with whom uh, did they talk? Who did they observe? They should observe older people. Yeah. Does and it mean they didn't? Sorry? Does it mean that they didn't? Oh, they did, but uh, who else? Not only elderly people. So what they found is that not only elderly people uh, were stakeholders in this situation, but also... Uh, Tutors? Sorry again. Tutors of elderly people who make a shopping for old people. Yes, uh, good point. Elderly people are their families. And what was not expected and, and yet was identified that another group of stakeholders are workers of the kitchen of this public catering company, this public kitchen. So there was working. Uh, let's say uh, some employees, some chefs 
because someone has to prepare those meals. And what designers found is not only problem on the side of the el elderly people that are that were obviously not satisfied from the existing service, but the problem was also in the uh, in the kitchen that was preparing those meals. But starting from the beginning, uh, the, uh, the designers found that the uh, elderly people have their uh, reasons for being not interested uh, in this in this service. Uh, the first thing that would be the most convenient for those people would be that they have enough money that in case they are not able to go to the grocery store, buy all the things, go by themselves back home and prepare the meals, if they are not able to do this uh, in the first place, they would love to have enough money so they can go to restaurant and, and buy ready food like a regular customer. And this would be the, the it would be the best solution. If they have not enough money to, to work out, to, to eat outside all the time, the second best solution would be to rely on the family that would help them with the, uh, with the shopping or with the making those meals or with or financing with some, some financial help. So family would be the second best choice. And only if they not cannot afford by themselves, uh, those meals and they cannot count on the family the last resort the, the the worst solution is using this social this public catering service but they still do not use it because they will feel ashamed they knew that every time this this public worker with this meal uh, would come to, to to his or her her uh, place there would be this ugly gray bus in front of the building. And this elderly person knew that all other neighbors will see this car and, and they will know that this person is somehow not able to, to take care of, of himself, of herself. So they just felt ashamed and didn't want this shame to be, uh, to be, to be going back each time that this ugly gray bus is coming under the... Uh, under the building. Uh, additional thing, the meals that were prepared, they were of course um, right meals from the nutrition point of view. There was all there, there were all the nutrition agreements that will uh, that that were important for the body, but there was no uh, no nice look, no nice name, just a just a simple names that these are potatoes, these are tomatoes, this is piece of meat, and that's all. So they felt it is not very elaborated, not very sophisticated. It's, it, it was very simple, they didn't like it. And what also um, designers found that these elderly people like to do anything on their own with this meal. So they would add some additional salt or pepper, or herbs, so these people wanted to have the impression that they can in any way influence the thing that they that they eat. And elderly people also didn't like eating alone. So when they have when they had the possibility, they would invite a neighbor uh, or anyone else just to have this eat uh, this this meal, eat this meal with someone in a in a, in a company. So this is what designers found on the side of the older people. But what they also found out is that on the backstage of this process, as, as we say, in the kitchen, the, um, the morale was also very low because working in this kitchen was a kind of last resort for the people that work there. If you couldn't find any other work, you would, you would go into this public service and you would go these boring meals for, for, for these people that don't even like those meals. So uh, the rotation, people uh, often started and, and quit work in, the, uh, in, in this kitchen. The morale was very uh, low. And this was another problem because in order to make a positive experiences for, from our clients, for our users, we first need to take care for the uh, persons that are responsible for creating this this service and that wasn't uh, that wasn't well took care of at the time that designers had this research process so having in mind that they found two target groups that uh, problems and needs need to be uh, addressed 
uh, there was a, created a, um, a series of workshop that uh, included not only elderly people, but also their families, workers of the kitchen, and also another group of stakeholders that was identified was the workers, employees of the of this local municipal authority. So we had this three group of stakeholders. And in a series of workshop that used some um, innovation ideation tools, uh, and the tool that was uh, mainly used was the analogy. And with the analogy, all the participants of the workshop discussed how could we improve uh, the service so the users of the service would have a feeling that they are in the restaurant and not in the not in the public catering service. And having in mind that did that analogy, uh, the final solution um, was built in a way that um, all the other people, all the older people, was uh, was having an impression that the restaurant is coming to them. There was no more this ugly black bus, but there was a kind of a visual rebranding. There was a new car with the new attractive logo. So it looked like a commercial company that is, uh, that is bringing the meal, not the public service. The, the drivers that would deliver these meals were um, trained with the customer service, so they had to be polite, uh, suggest not only one meal, but the older person had the possibility to choose from the two propositions. So not you're taking what we will give you today, but you have two propositions and you can uh, choose whatever you want. There was a big emphasis of the name on the names of the of the food. So there was not a, just a piece of meat, but there would be name names for each meal as you would find them in the restaurant. And uh, people liked it very much. These older people had also the possibility to uh, to order two meals for two people so so they could easily invite a, a friend for example from the neighborhood to eat together and also there was a possibility to take a meal that would be um, that would be not spiced in a final way but the older person could also make some changes like salt pepper herbs and so on because this was important to them what's important uh, when the process, when this process of uh, delivering food meals changed, uh, many of these older people give compliments uh, and had a good opinions that they would tell to those drivers. And what changed on the backside is that every time that a good uh, opinion was uh, was given to driver, it would be uh, delivered to the people in the kitchen. So each good opinion, each good recommendation was. Uh, told aloud on the front in the front of all the employees so they knew that the, that their work is appreciated what also changed is that those workers of the kitchen were not only workers to prepare what was told to them but they also had the opportunity to propose new meals and th those meals were easily tested and if the, the meal was accepted and uh, welcomed by the old elderly people, it would go into the menu for, uh, for, for a longer time. And each of these initiatives would be uh, appreciated again on the, on the forum of all employees. And this change uh, caused that from the uh, workplace of a last resort, this kitchen change into the place that is nice to have in the CV if you would like to work in the, um, in the food sector. And if you would like to be a chef, uh, people started to apply to have an internship or a month or three uh, stay in that place because this changed into nice to be place. So radical change that was uh, perceived super, uh, super good in all the uh, on the all the society this this um, project received many awards from the holistic view uh, of the of the challenge focusing not only on the end users but also looking at this backstage and wondering how can we deliver value to all the stakeholders involved in this particular experience and uh, uh, another case study that you are probably familiar with uh, regarding the uh, magnetic resonance, uh, a great technological product from 
uh, GE Healthcare Company, a great magnetic resonance technology that was invited by the uh, medical doctors and the medical staff in hospitals. The medical uh, apparatus was uh, awarded in many technology uh, contests. And there's a story that creator of this, uh, of this hardware um, have a, had a walk to the hospital to look at his, at his baby technology um, in its natural environment, so in the hospital. And he was shocked to find that uh, there was a baby that was being directed to this, um, to this machine and the baby was crying, shouting, and the baby didn't want to go uh, for this MRI because the baby was uh, terrified and was afraid of the machine. And this creator of the, of the hardware was shocked because he thought that this technology is unique. It will help, uh, it will help people. And he sees this, 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 this child that is terrified and didn't want uh, to go uh, to, the, uh, to the MRI machine. So then he learned that uh, the technology is very good, but with the babies, they have a problem that babies are afraid because you need to go into this tunnel. It's it's dark in there. That this this device is very loud, with this with these noises during the uh, during the MRI. So this made him uh, and and because of that the efficiency of the of, of the MRI for children was very low. Like ten percent of the patients had uh, had a well done MRI. All other all other need to be. Um, uh, conducted it again and so on. So what this guy found out that the challenge was not preparing a great technological tool. This was this was already done. This this tool was great. But the another challenge that he defined was how to make the experience of this MRI more pleasant to children so they can handle it and not be afraid. And once this kind of challenge was was defined, the solution. Uh, appeared to be very simple, didn't require any technological changes or low or high cost investments. What did they do? The solution that they proposed that changed the service of the MRI for children was creating a story. So instead of only waiting for the MRI, children uh, or the child heard a story that he will now have a fantastic journey and he will uh, go to the pirate's ship and they will go to the full sea. And if he is lucky, if he has a good day, maybe he will have a luck to see a sea battle when there will be two boats, there will be some attacks, there will be some grenades and so on, only if he will be lucky. So only thing that they changed with the machine was adding this story, and preparing some additional interior design that this place looked like a pirate ship or in another uh, versions like a cosmic uh, cosmic space. And with this story told at the beginning of the of the MRI, the the the, the young baby would voluntarily go into into this tunnel the baby would hide in this machine and you know the baby had a luck and they always uh, had a sea battle with all the grenades and all the noises. And thanks to this little change, the effectiveness of this uh, uh, of this MRI for children raised from the 10% to, to 60 or 70%. But many of the children ask, when can I come again to this fantastic place? So because the challenge was formulated in a new way, uh, and new solutions were available to make, which, which those solutions are so helpful to, to keeping children safe, which is, which is very important. Two cases that used the human-centered approach uh, for different cases, uh, and we will use this human-centered approach for uh, other, um, other areas, many of the areas that we work with, so, so people or, or the business, or the economy, all this cross-border interaction, there will be often uh, wicked problems. So the solution is based on the challenge that we will define. And this is the thing that we'll do uh, in the following steps. But now uh, let's have 15 minutes break, unless you have some question to this section. So if you have question, please let me know.
Okay, so 15 minutes break. Okay, thank you. So see you soon. See you at uh, quarter past 11. Am I right? That's right. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. okay, so 15 minutes has passed. Please tell me if you're already here. Yes, I'm here. What about the rest of our participants? I'm, I'm, uh, I am as well. I'm here. I'm, I'm back. Here. What about the rest? Okay, so now we will be um, starting the workshop part and we will be dividing into groups. So let's wait a second more. We need all people here to, to count how many there's of us so we can create groups. So just a second more. And if you just came back, please let me know. I'm waiting for the old people to be here. So in the meantime, I've got a question. Agnieszka, I mean, Agnieszka Wilgorecka, you told us that you will not be on the entire workshop. Are you still there? And as I recall, the same was from Gudrun. Gudrun, can you, can you tell us, uh, are you able to participate in the workshop that we will now start? And are you there? Okay, so then count how many people do we uh, have uh, Magda, can you please help me with counting in case I uh, I miss someone? We need to find out how many people now we have online that will be taking part in the workshop as a participant. Maybe we can just write in the chat who is present. That will be quicker. Yeah, perfect idea. Michał, Kamil, Michał, Kate, Agnieszka. Eric yeah. Bexay raised the hand. Yes. Okay. Yep. I see it now. Okay. So, Hubert, uh, how many people do we need to have uh, in one group? I mean, in each group? It depends on if other will come back in a second or no, because if this is the team we have, uh, including you, Magda, there would be there would be seven people. And in this case, I would go with one team. But if two more people are coming in a second, it would be two teams. So it's quite important to, 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 to know now how many people do we have. Okay, so Gudrun, are you still with us? Okay, Hubert, so I, yep. I recommend start uh, creating groups. I mean, to, to respect the time of our participants and I hope that more people will join us. Yeah, okay, so... Um, if now we have seven people that will be taking part uh, in the workshop, I would go with one group, not to divide you into two groups because we will have uh, two small groups. So I suggest that we uh, continue as a one group, which is uh, uh, quite good because we will then have to uh, jump from the breakout rooms to the main room. So that, that's, that's quite convenient and we can all uh, participate on this main uh, on this main conference window okay so going into the workshop the first thing because be, before we will start to start the process we always need some uh, general idea what is the uh, what is the challenge we at the at the beginning we don't have a specific um, design challenge that will be the outcome of the of the definition stage of the process but still we need to do if we deal with the healthcare or the, or the education uh, or or the young uh, people's uh, behaviors on the streets and whatever and so we we need some general uh, idea what will be the challenge that we'll be dealing with that we will be having uh, the uh, research the empathetic conversations so we need to start with some uh, general assessments of uh, assessment of all what's uh, around us to to decide what's most what's the most interesting for you to dig deeper with the process. That's why uh, we will start a practical part right now, and we will be um, working on cross border services. And there is a um, formal definition of what the cross-border service is, but it um, it relates 
mostly to the legal aspects and the tax aspects. So, uh, so we will not stick to the formal definition of cross-border service. Uh, instead, we will uh, look for each commercial activity that will require interaction of various stakeholders. It may be company, it may be NGO, it might be pri private person, it may be hospital or, or municipal government, whatever. So commercial activity that requires any kind of interaction of stakeholders from Poland and Germany. Generally, this, this would be interaction from stakeholders from two or more countries. But today we want to focus on the thing that relates uh, to our daily, li their daily life on the uh, on next to the border of, of two countries. So we are especially interested uh, in this interaction between Poland and Germany. So please, uh, in the following exercise that I will uh, uh, introduce you in a second, please think as a people running businesses, people managing businesses, what kind of interactions did you have uh, recently or some farther in the in, in in the past, what kind of interactions did you have with the uh, with our German colleagues, with our German neighbor, and um, as a company, as a manager, as a engineer, an engineer that you work as, or as a just private person, as an end user when you wanted to go uh, for a one day or week trip. Uh, to Germany, or you wanted to invite someone from Germany uh, private, privately to, to Poland or, or for a business trip, please, in a second, think about all your experiences in doing stuff that required interaction of Polish entities and German, uh, German entities. Uh, we are looking at that broadly, so you do not have to be um, limited only to some uh, legal aspects. We look broadly as uh, people from business, but also as uh, regular people that have their regu regular life and regular stuff to do. We will think about all those uh, challenges. And in the following step, before we start the process, we will start with the challenge. So for that, uh, we will use a context map tool, uh, which you now see on the screen. And if you, if you take a look at this context map, it is nothing else than visual representation of the uh, well-known economic tool uh, named PESTLE. So with this economic tool, you would assess the political um, factors, economic factors, societal, technological factors, as well as the legislation and ecology. So we are working very below, bro broadly on all what's around us um, in the frames of the things that may be in common for, for Polish people and for German people. As you can see, this tool is self-explanatory. So for each of these areas, think of about your experiences or the experiences that you know from your colleagues and for, from the, the members of your family. What can we point here in the terms of cross-border service, so something that relates anyhow to Poland and to Germany. Um, and we will, look, we will work on this tool with the, uh, with the Myra platform. So in a second, I will send you a URL to the platform. With this URL, you, would, you should be able to, um, to instantly work on the, on the tool, but uh, we'll see how it works. Oh, and the question is since, am I right that we are all Polish here? I think so. Is, 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 is here anyone who's not Pol Polish speaker? Looking on the names, I bet there are, but it seems that this person is not present. So. Magda, Magda, what about switching to Polish? I guess we can stay. Um, we can stay with English as it comes to this task. I mean, mapping challenges, and then maybe we can uh, work together in Polish if you would like so. Okay, so this exercise in English. So in the chat window, I will uh, provide you the URL. Please, uh, please use it, and tell me if the 
if the micro works, if you can enter the platform, if you see it. Have you already pasted it? Uh, yeah, I have nothing. Okay. Please just make sure that you are sending that to everyone. Okay, now I can see. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I'm in. Hey, okay, thank you. Waiting for others. Does anyone have problem with accessing the, the platform? Nope. No. Perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is to use this context canvas to discuss what I mentioned just a second ago, all aspects related to cross-border activities. And once we have it, we will vote on a topic that will be the most interesting for you to, to, to start the uh, design process for both the discussion and, and the voting. We have 20 minutes. So that's just enough time to, to have discussion and vote. So please, uh, please stay on the uh, on the platform. Okay, I can see that it seems I didn't block the, the canvases. So, so they move, but please, uh, there you will find uh, uh, on the Miro, there's a canvas is prepared from, for three groups. I always make it uh, uh, prepare the canvases for more groups that we need. For now, it seems that we uh, will be working as a one group. So please uh, all focus on this first row with the uh, caption team number one. And what we want to do now is uh, focus on the first, on the first uh, canvas, context map canvas. Yeah, but we need to bring it back to the place where it was. Um, for those of you who are not yet familiar with those uh, online, online workshopping tools, on the left side uh, of the window, there's a toolbar. And what we now need is a fourth position. So this square with this uh, visible margin. And once you click it, it is a tool to use post-it notes. And what we now to do is to stick post-it notes on this context map canvas. And uh, each of you is assessing all the canvas uh, uh, all the canvas uh, at the same time. And each of you, please put the post-it notes to just sign the, the topics that are important uh, for you. So let's spend five minutes on individual work that everyone will uh, fill the canvas with his or her post-it notes. And after that, we will have a discussion that everyone will tell what is the most important according to, uh, to him or her. And after that, we will have some more discussion and voting. But now, five minutes for individual work. You can see all the elements of the context map canvas. So now, please use the post-it notes to to fill it with what you uh, what you think is relevant. Uh, I suggest you can uh, select some different kinds of of post-it notes. So uh, in a second, you will be able to recognize the post-its that you that you inserted here. So this is my suggestion. Do you have any questions uh, about this exercise now? Honestly, I do. Okay. I, yes, I, thank I, you. I, I missed uh, actually our task, what we should do right now. And now you have this context map canvas with those areas like demographic trends, rules, economy, and okay. think about all those areas uh, in terms of looking some uh, activities that regards both Poland and German. So you as a person as, or you as a working or as a businessman, uh, try to find uh, areas that are relevant for those, uh, those fields. Anything that relates interaction between Poland and Germany from any of those categories. And if you find something, post it on this, uh, on this canvas. Can you just give us like an example? Just like a quick, quick, quick example, that would be nice. Okay, like a competition. Uh, what trends do you see among your competitors? If you have an IT company, you could have uh, a conversation in your, uh, in your company last week that there's a company very similar to you right, uh, right uh, on the German border that somehow competition to you. So uh, co very similar German competi competing companies would be a factor that you think it's worth mentioning here. Um, Customer needs, like if you're selling something to both yeah, Polish. Sorry to disturb you, but I can see that other people are on the other uh, uh, board. 
Yeah, so I think you have to navigate with the arrows, guys. So you will be able to move to the to the left to the context map canvas. I don't know where you are right now, but yeah. So all of you, uh, you can zoom out oh, yes. to see the entire board, and we are working on the very first canvas uh, in this online board. So it's context canvas. It is uh, it is uh, named this way. There is a caption. I don't know why these canvases are moving because I blocked them. But yeah, they are floating now. We need to focus on the context map canvas. All right, guys. So the question to all of you, can you see context map canvas? Yes, I can see. Yeah, yes. I can see it. OK, perfect. So right now, our task is to, with the sticky notes, to put some comments or ideas regarding to demographic trends, rules and regulation, economic competition, uncertainties, customer needs, technology trends. It's another example for the customer needs. If your company works with both Polish and German customers, you may notice some differences in approach, requirements, and so on. This is also, I think, you can put in the customer needs. Demographic trends, if you have anything that would uh, bring your attention, the same. And uh, this, this goes for the all the fields. And I suggest that you just start writing something that uh, it will uh, it will clarify on the go. When you click with the post-it, it it, um, it starts with quite a big size. And uh, since we can zoom in a lot, I suggest that you uh, reduce the size of this post-it. You can do it by holding this uh, dot in the corner, and then you can uh, reduce the size of the of the post-it. And thanks to that, we will have more more post-its uh, on this canvas. Guys, can I just kindly ask you not to move this canvas and just navigate with arrows? The board is movable. That that's the problem. Yeah, and I don't know why I'm not, I'm not seeing now the option to block it to lock it in one place. I can see it goes forward, so maybe two more minutes for this this stage, and then we will move further. Okay, so maybe we can now discuss what you got, and maybe during the discussion we will have some additional uh, ideas. But I think we've got a good starting point for uh, for the next move. So, could a volunteer um, start to to show what he or she written here? Okay, I can start. So for demographic trends, I wrote TikTok generation. Uh, looking on us, we used to be kind of Facebook generation, but right now everything looking on my children mm -hmm. uh, goes via TikTok. Uh, rules and regulation. If you are not vaccinated while crossing the border, this is something what I experienced recently. I mean, I didn't experience, but I was uh, made aware that if I cross the German border I would be quarantined for 10 days automatically. So looking from that perspective, I think this is kind of stuff what might be not really helpful while doing business together with German partners. Mm -hmm. uh, economy and environment, green and eco solutions are trendy, but at the same time more expensive. So we can see the trends that we go into the uh, less plastic solutions and, for example, uh, much more uh, 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 ecological uh, uh, bugs, etc. And not only related to goods, but to, to services uh, people are uh, using and choosing, I think, more often companies which are able to prove that they are more ecological than their competitors. On the competition, strong pressure on the cost competitiveness, meaning that after COVID, I think right now everyone started to count money. And uh, this is the main uh, driver for, for, uh, for, for the business right now. I mean, it used to be <laughs> money all the time, but, but I think right now, especially um, after the first wave, wave, wave of COVID, uh, when a lot of companies went bankrupt, uh, there is a strong, uh, strong, strong pressure on the, especially in Germany, on the cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the 
technology trends, I wrote apps for everything. I, I observe such a situation that whatever you touch, is, uh, whatever you touch uh, it has already apps for it. So uh, sometimes, no, without sometimes, but this is what I observe. Uh, customer needs, great quality with low prices. So this is what I observe. And the second one on the supply chains, uh, due to this uh, pandemic, I observed that in the past we used to import many things from China. Right now, I think the trend is a little bit different that we uh, people are looking or companies are looking for the local supply chains uh, partners. And at the same time, uh, it's mainly due to the reason that uh, people require quicker deliveries and at the same time, uh, people uh, don't want to rely on the supply chains which will be blocked because, for example, another pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uncertainties, I wrote to another COVID-19 wave, which might happen, and vaccination passports. I don't know whether it will be implemented or not. I, I know that France and Malta are testing them right now. Polish government is willing to, uh, to, to, to join this uh, testing uh, tests. But at the same time, it might be so that some people just don't want to be vaccinated. And what about them when making business? So does it mean that they will not be allowed to enter other country? Uh, I don't know. That is why I put it as a kind of uncertainty here. Good. Farewell. Thank you. Um, who's next? I can go with the purple ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the demographic trends, actually, this is uh, right now the trend is right. Everyone's posting their videos, audios. Uh, and uh, yeah, so in our company and so in our, in our business, the problem is that previously there were huge studios, video studios and the big customers. And right now the switch is to a smaller, smaller customers, which as you said, Camila, are just TikTok, <laughs> TikTok generation and a lot of small uh, like video and audio creators, uh, which just basically are, will be becoming the base of the customers, uh, rules and generate and the regulations. So as I just mentioned that due to the COVID situation, there was a big problem with shipments. Uh, actually, I know that it was mostly related on the Polish German border with uh, the people going from one place to another, but it was also a logistics issue uh, with with posting also hardware because you know the, the third COVID uh, COVID um, COVID wave there was also some kind of a you know so, some issues with the regulations that's but this is COVID related mm -hmm. uh, economy and envi environment um, so that's exactly about the green energy and everyone is freaking out uh, around uh, cost saving and you know energy savings mm -hmm. especially with right now when we're digging the cryptocurrencies and everything everyone's just uh, there's a trend around getting uh, as much hardware with less uh, calculations with less energy that is possible mm, competition well um yes it's since i don't know ages the gap between poland and germany in the cost of the of, of production cost of uh, qualified employees which are flowing right now still in, into the germany from poland no changes here since years. Uh, technology trends actually right now everyone is moving from uh, from perpetual licensing uh, to subscription, and uh, this is something also we've noticed in our business. And this is will be this will be like a really good trend which will be progressing. Customer experience uh, still the same. Germany needs better qualified and and skilled uh, Polish employees, and this is a gap which will be holding for for a long time. From what I see, and there are some are some uncertainties. This is actually everyone was just saying under COVID wave. So this is the biggest uncertainty in in last few months, and that's it. Perfect, thank you. So who's next would like to sh discuss what he or she written here? So I can not put that much of input, but I can go with mine as as well. So for the demographic trends, I've uh, written the work from home getting to be a standard way of working. So we are moving our offices, uh, our customers are moving the offices, so uh, our peers are moving the offices to to their homes, actually. So uh, there will be no need for that much of office space uh, that we have right now. Um, for the technology, 
trends uh, from me is uh, one two points. One is that everything we do uh, right now, uh, what well, everything we want to um, deal with, if we want to make get something done in the city hall or with our government, uh, even this governmental stuff is done online. So uh, there is no need to move out that much of our uh, living place. So um, yeah, that's like <laughs> less and less face-to-face uh, -face cooperation, face-to-face -face communication with the people, employees and um, everybody around us. And the last one is the gamification of the activities. So um, the more applications we use, like there is also a point apps for everything uh, for somebody. So it just realized me that there are small rewards. The people are being rewarded for the achievements. And actually this is something that is uh, making people uh, less uh, satisfied with uh, something that really doesn't bring any satisfaction. So if you will achieve like, you know, a silver coin, which is a virtual silver coin for that, that you went through um, <laughs> you know, several steps of, uh, I don't know, whatever you can imagine of, of you or you run 10 kilometers and you got some rewards, you, you're getting this kind of a small rewarding uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so I can present my notes. So I put, can you hear me? Yes. So I put uh, in the section of economy environment, I put uh, popularization of, uh, of remote work. And I think that's a great, um, great change and uh, um, it affects uh, labor market and especially uh, wage market. And also um, it makes um, that some, some even many supporting services uh, may be developed. And I also put uh, IT security in the part of, uh, in the technological part. Uh, and I meant here that the process uh, of digitalization uh, will be followed uh, by um, taking more care of uh, security. I mean, how to make this whole flow of data, uh, how to make it more secure. So I put only these two because I don't want to repeat another. So that's all. Perfect, thank you. And um, I think that's all, or have I missed something? And someone's posted. I did, but actually it was already described by, the, uh, by others. And so, which one was that? Um, it's a uh, quality on customer side, so uh, customer needs. So mm -hmm. I think there is a difference what the customer uh, expectations are in German versus Poland, because uh, quite often the quality is the first choice for German, while uh, for uh, the customer in Poland, it will be the price. And for the competition, it's um, mostly about employees cost because high, it, it all depends uh, what kind of employee uh, we are looking for, because for if it's high skilled, uh, the cost will be lower um, for most of the uh, employees, the cost will be lower in Poland than in Germany, but um, there will there is also a market of employees that is much bigger in Germany than in Poland. So uh, you can also validate from this perspective. That's Perfect. all. Perfect, thank you. So as you can see, there's, um, there's different stuff and I can see we have some interesting topics. Um, in a second, we will go to the uh, to the design process. Uh, we will stick with one of those uh, concepts. We will have a, an agreement to this concept in a second. It will be important that while we are choosing, um, there will need to be a one person that is able to um, to to talk about it because we will need a user that will uh, will be make an interview with. So so uh, the topic that we will uh, choose. 
needs to be represented by a, at least one person from, from our group that has personal experiences with this topic. We will ask you questions and we will ask you to share your uh, story about this specific area. And uh, all of those um, comments are correct. Uh, and uh, this is a, a good example of context map canvas. If we have, if we had much time, um, uh, longer time, we could go with more uh, ideas. But we need to go with the process, and this process is more like a, a laboratory exercise, not a real uh, world study. So we will work with what we uh, what we've got. And uh, another thing worth to introduce at this uh, step is that uh, when we work with design projects, we will often have uh, so-called design constraints. So there are just things that we need to take into account in the uh, in the work and and there's no discussion and uh, because of the frames uh, for the workshop that we are uh, now we will need to choose the element that has the strongest cross-border um, aspect uh, I, I i suppose from the from the list that for example none of you uh, lives in the germany but works in Szczecin, for example or the other way none of you uh, lives in Szczecin but needs to to to, to go reg regularly to, uh, to, to to Germany. So there is no such kind. Or um, or your children uh, do not need to cross the border, for example, going to to school. If if you had those experiences, it, it would be reflected here in the canvas. But for for the things that we can see on the canvas, I think from the uh, perspective of the cross border uh, cooperation. The important uh, and interesting stuff is this uh, um, popularization of the remote work, which means that we can work and also do many stuff, uh, a lot of stuff, formal and informal, uh, straight from home through the computer without the necessity of moving. So this is a one theme that uh, appears in a couple of boxes which means this is an important theme so so the uh, so this remoting everything and personal stuff and and the job stuff and this would be the one one theme second theme is that uh, the buying uh, preferences buying uh, buying behaviors of german clients versus polish like this this quality uh, versus price also, topic that uh, reflects in a couple of boxes is uh, employees and that uh, our German neighbors uh, take advantage of, of our Polish qualified employees, which, is, uh, uh, which has good sides and, and, and worse sides, but it is a, a process that there's no doubt that is existing. And this is also a, uh, an area that we can think how to make this, uh, this process the most beneficiary both for German um, economy, but also for Polish uh, economy. Um, I'm uh, curious about this TikTok generation and this trend of... Um, my of creating a new generation of micro producers of multimedia which i agree this this process is existing uh, i admit that tiktok is absolute unknown for me but it's another uh, signal that i need to have a look at that maybe this tiktok thing is also interesting if uh, if we can think of any cross border um cross-border relationships regarding this thing. I don't, I don't know, maybe young people from both Pol Pol Poland and Germany have some kind of interaction on, on this TikTok, but that's uh, for sure interesting stuff. Um, so that's about the summary. If you are looking at this and, uh, and hearing the discussion, do you have any more thoughts about uh, Polish-German aspects of what's happening now globally? Or please tell me in just uh, just share your thoughts. Uh, how do you uh, how do you think which of these themes um, would be the easiest for you? And this may be tricky uh, to 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 think about in the frames of Polish German interaction. 
those topics that I said, or maybe you think other topic would be quite uh, quite good to work on on the solutions. What do you think? Which of the topics? Just your feelings. Oh, and the one that I missed is about those uh, ecological solutions that we have global trends going to this more ecological stuff, which is also more expensive. There's always exchange with Poland and, and, and Germany about these ec ecological restrictions. For the time being, uh, Germany was first, those restrictions came later to Poland, but now it, it, it's, it, it's more like the same, but also those aspects of going green, being more eco are also important now. So what, your, uh, what are your impressions? What could we uh, deal with? So I'm for um, this um, thing, a real subject, product or service connected with, uh, with IT. I mean, app and, and gamification because we can somehow uh, create, uh, I know, a product, I mean, an app for people just to know about events. I mean, uh, on the German and Polish side. So that's a possible and uh, that, that's a possible need. So I will be, uh, I will choose some, something connected with, with this technology trend, Maria. Thank you. So I will, I will put that forward because some specific app would be solution. And for now, <laughs> okay. we need to think what is the, uh, what is the, what, what, how, how would you phrase the, mm -hmm. the challenge that the app would be well on social solutions? Mm -hmm. To name the challenge, yeah? to, to, to name yeah. the need. Because the app is one of solutions, but what, mm -hmm. what's the need first? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, lack of information about uh, events and uh, organizations and activities undertaken uh, on the German side and also on Polish side. That's for sure. For From my experience, I can tell that we live very closely and if there are any interesting events that I could attend with a half an hour right or hour right, I don't know. So there, may, there, there might be cool things that happen just right next to the border and I don't know about it. There's of course another topic now, if, if this uh, travels could be made with the restrictions that we also see on the canvas. Mm -hmm. But okay, the, 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 the topic would be exchange of information and uh, information about interesting activities taking place on, on both sides of the border. This is good. And what's next? What else? No, uh, Hubert, uh, because I, I feel that I lost uh, the, the feeling that I understand what we do right now. Now the question is having the having discussed what you written yeah. how do you think uh, how can we adapt this what you written or maybe you have some another idea what would be the good topic to work in a following process but having in mind that we need to look for this cross-border aspect uh -huh. so what about remote work that for example uh, we as employers uh, em employers from from uh, uh, Poland, uh, we might uh, we might face the situation that, for example, our employees will be lured by German companies, and uh, they will be staying in Poland but working for German companies. So they will pay them more due to the reason that they are able to do so. So in a way, maybe this is something what what might be interesting. It is that Polish employees now, even um, easier than ever, may change employer for a German company and it doesn't even uh, need to, to move to another country. So the, the competition for Polish company from German employers is now bigger than ever because the, the, the employee don't even have to move abroad would be that Camille yeah this, this is the, uh, the you have just defined the problem that's right and having those two examples do you uh, 
uh, do you think of other such such challenges for for now for us uh, as clients or for us as companies say that again hmm? I, didn't, i didn't get that sorry <laughs> having those two examples do you have another uh, propositions of the challenges Ah, okay. Uh, except for remote work and gami gamification, or uh, not gamif gamification, but uh, that we don't know about the events which are next to the border. Exactly. Well, there, there is still language limitation. I mean, not everyone from Poland speak German. Not every, not every German speak Polish. So um, this is the 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 major think so uh, everything every services that would be available available to german or polish must be in some common language meaning english so yeah but i don't know if that's relevant to to all of that i think it is it is so true so despite us living so close there's still many polish don't know german and german don't know polish so there's a language barrier do we have something else some time ago i was on a conference uh, where basically people from universities uh, were discussing the topic uh, that is related to the let's say economy of the east germany which means the germany uh, we could say starts from berlin and everything that is on the on the east nothing uh, really happens but there is a lot of people that moved from berlin that are rich for example and there is many uh, authorities that want to invest in, in the infrastructure and especially they want to invest in startups and to bring people back so people can uh, create some um, companies and Uh, somehow make the this region uh, more stronger in terms of economy so there is a problem that we don't know about this for example in Aberswalde and in other uh, cities uh, authorities try to make for example co-working spaces and they give grants for startups to create some services and they are looking for uh, Uh, partners on, in Szczecin and uh, in our region, for example, to uh, to work on some uh, on some projects that uh, also engage universities. So th there are people from universities. They have kind of small cities, but great ideas, and they are not, let's say, used. To and and this uh, this this power is not uh, efficiently used to, uh, to create something uh, and use the region and the opportunity that, that is there. So there are incentives in the East Germany, state incentives for new businesses to increase the economic activity in the East Germany. And from those intensive uh, uh, incentives could use also Polish companies, but Polish companies don't know about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, plus, we we can add the uh, the ability to use people from universities, so they can uh, run some projects on the university. Use student students, so the company, if you have some invention, uh, then you can basically test it or even. I don't know, 3D print something, use uh, this all capabilities that this university give, gives to you, including the brain power. So uh, it, it corresponds a bit with what, uh, with what Magda said, that there's a lack of communication uh, in terms of what's happening uh, on the both sides of the border. Uh, the first thing was more about uh, private things like personal, Uh, events, cultural or entertainment events, but here we have lack of communication, um, but from the business perspective, like uh, growing a innovation ecosystem, lack of communication that will help to, to grow this ecosystem, both with German and, and, and Polish side. This is also a good thing to discuss. 
Thank you. Everything else we have? Okay, so to, to sum up, we have three, uh, three themes that, uh, that we have found with this uh, tool. First is that uh, there are activities, cultural, educational, entertainment on both sides. This may be, uh, those may be interesting events that we would like to attend and uh, we are quite close to most of them, but we don't know about them. So this would be the first challenge. And then we would discuss how to, what to do with that, how to solve it. Second challenge is that there are possibilities to grow uh, startups, innovative companies. There are even uh, attractive incentives from, uh, from the German side, but Polish companies don't know about it. This is the second topic. And the third topic is that during the pandemic, uh, employees can switch to German company without going abroad, which makes uh, the pressure on the Polish companies even bigger. This is the third topic. And I think this is a good uh, base to, to move further. We would decide for one of these uh, topics um, and we need to choose the topic that we will uh, investigate. But since we will uh, be doing some uh, interviews, we need to uh, have a person that, that is able to talk in more uh, detail uh, about, about this case. So uh, let, us, uh, uh, let me do the mapping. For the topic of, uh, of competitiveness of Polish and uh, German employers, I think this was uh, Camille, this was your topic that you mentioned. Yeah, that was me. Would you be able to elaborate and ask some questions by other? Uh, I can always try. That's good enough. Okay, thank you. The topic of events, that there are some interesting events that we could go uh, as a private person. Uh, has any of you personal experience that you went to Germany uh, to, to, to some event that, would in, that was interesting uh, to you. Has any of you such an experience? Okay, so here Magda would be a volunteer as, as Magda gave us this example. And the third topic was about this ecosystem that there are incentives. So the question is, uh, when you run your companies or you, or you worked in a startup or a company or you founded such an uh, business, uh, who of you has uh, experience with looking for the financing, looking for the grants, for partners, for incubators, uh, uh, angels, business angels going to pitches and so on? Who has relevant uh, experience and could ask, uh, answer some questions in a second? You don't have to be uh, an eagle in that. We just need some, uh, some, uh, someone with some basic experience in this, in, in this area. I think, I think you need to choose a volunteer, Hubert. So this would be Michal. I, I personally, yeah, sure. I personally don't, don't uh, have that complex knowledge because for me it was a new, uh, a new thing that I have learned recently that something like that happened, happens. And uh, I, I personally didn't look for uh, things like that. Okay, any of you had any experience in that, in that area? Okay, so in that case, uh, please tell me if that's fine for you. I think we could go into the uh, arbitrary decision that we would focus on this topic of uh, competition between Germ German and Polish uh, employers, because this is a thing that uh, affects us all because we are whether uh, employers or employees. So this is a topic worth investigating. And uh, we would ask some questions to Camille that uh, about it because as uh, Avid is, uh, is a big company, uh, I am sure there will be some uh, stories, examples that would uh, make this uh, topic more interesting to us. So we've done it. Uh, uh, we've done it. We have the area. If you can go back to the uh, to the presentation, please. Can you just for a second share the screen? I mean, to have it on the Zoom just for a 
second, I mean the, um, the map, the tool, the previous tool. And now do you see the slides or do you see my screen and what's on the screen? Mapping challenges context map. And I would like to ask you to share just for a second this context map canvas, just to share the screen on Zoom. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So that's the result of our exercise. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So right now, shall we just swap to Polish? Wouldn't be what we agreed before? Um, it because it's in the frame of the uh, the European funds program. I uh, I'm not sure, Magda. Please, can you? tell us how should we uh, behave right now. It, it is your uh, call to make it right. So tell us how should we, how should we do it? So I would like to stay with, uh, with English because um, yes, the workshop is under the project and uh, um, I need to okay. show, I need to show, you know, the, the English results. So it will be, uh, it will be a little bit chaotic to work in Polish and just write in English. So if you don't mind, uh, let's stay with English. Sure. No problem. It's always a good exercise to talk in English a bit. So we've got the challenge, the, the overall area, that's great. And now we can move to the actual process of which first step is to empathize. And uh, in, a, in a real, uh, real world process, we would go to and ask uh, several people that have the relevant uh, experience now because the time frame is limited uh, and our group is limited, we will do the best uh, as we can and we will make an empathy with uh, empathy with uh, Camille who will share his, uh, his thoughts, but this will be uh, a starting point also to, uh, to, to build on Camille's um, experiences and maybe you will want to add something to the tool that we will use and now we want to try to understand go uh, and wear the shoes of this Polish employer that has a problem because he knows that the employer needs employees and the same goes with the German companies and since uh, this remote the remote work is a new standard Polish uh, Polish uh, employees don't even have to go abroad. So this barrier of changing the company from Polish to German is low as, as, it, uh, as never. So this is a, a challenge for a, for a company. And now we want to understand this situation from the viewpoint of Amil and the, and the company that he's representing. It is important to, to, to remember that the process is sequential and each stage requires different approach. In the emphasized stage, we want to get to know the problem better, but we do not think of new ideas right now. This step is not about ideas, but this step, this step is about understanding the situation. So we will listen, we will ask questions, uh, but not uh, like giving feedback or, uh, or jumping into, into ideas. We will uh, use the um, um, sentences like, tell me, last time when you did something, uh, walk me through the, 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 the last experience of such kind, uh, ask why did you behave that way? Why did your company decided this way and another? Why did you do this? Can you please tell me more about it? And uh, I think we will change a bit this, uh, this scenario as, as I prepared because there uh, may be many uh, people asking questions. So there will be, there will be one user one one participant that will act as a user for this case it will be Camille so we will have one user but instead of only one person asking questions um, let's say we can uh, we can uh, all ask questions uh, to Camille to have uh, to have more people uh, thinking about the possible questions so Camille is answering you will be uh, asking and the first thing that we need to uh, the first thing that we need to prepare is some uh, list of questions. So now we can spend like two minutes. Each of you write down a question that you think it would be relevant to ask to Camille, so he can uh, share with us his uh, his experiences. 
and uh, you uh, Camille, uh, since we are uh, all in such small group uh, on a bigger workshop I would uh, ask all users to uh, to, 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 to come to me for, for a couple of seconds and I will instruct users to try to be helpful uh, because we are now in this uh, exercise environment. Uh, some of the participants maybe didn't uh, use interviews before in such a manner. So in case, Camille, you can hear that there is some uh, silence, like no one has a good question to ask. Uh, please try to be helpful and to um, to continue the conversation. So so be proactive in sharing your experience. These are the examples of the question that you can prepare in a second. Uh, what do we do is asking uh, for for a story about the last time when you did something. What did you like in this uh, process? What you found annoying? What you didn't like in the process? Uh, what was the, the positive elements, what did you miss, and so on. And this is important, and we'll see how you will uh, go with it, that we want to avoid any solution-based questions, like if we, what do you think if we made a database of something and something? This would be already a solution, and we don't want to suggest any solutions, so please uh, try to be uh, aware that we do not want to talk about solutions or suggest solutions. We want to get the full story, the full picture, and we're asking about experiences. If you find anything interesting, ask why, can you please elaborate uh, on the topic and so on. So now let's spend just two minutes, each of you, to, to prepare a question that you think it is worth to, uh, to ask Camille in a second. And when we, uh, when we are back, we will move to, 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 to the online platform and then there we will uh, ask Camille all the questions and you will immediately fill this uh, empathy map with the, with the notes from the interview. So now just a minute or two of individual work. Robert, I have just one uh, question. Can you please rephrase the need? It will be helpful for us to formulate questions. Polish. Uh, German companies are big competition for Polish companies because Polish employees may switch to German companies without going abroad. Okay. So this is not the challenge because we will go into challenge definition in a second. This is the, the area, mm -hmm. okay. the okay. overall topic. Okay, so we can go back to, to the Miro platform. There's a empathy map canvas everyone please have this canvas in front of you and also the questions that you prepare to Camille and let's do this session of questions uh, and answer and digging into interesting answers so we can uh, make such uh, a easy and fast interview who would like to to start with the question and okay, so 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 maybe the obvious question is if you could say some example story about uh, a worker that did something like that and the reasons behind. I mean, mo moved to the German company from the Polish company uh, and, and now he works remotely. Okay. So um, is it something that it has to be a real case or is it, uh, Hubert, the, the case that I'm aware of it doesn't happen in my it didn't happen in my company but this is the real case so can i describe this one sure okay so basically we had one a really experienced guy uh, um, working for um, software development for automotive uh, recently he received the offer from uh, the company so-called tier one uh, mainly in Poland, we are tier two uh, for automotive industry. And right now he, um, he, he uh, joined this company. And right now he's looking for some co-working space in Szczecin or the office uh, where he would be able to share some cost with the other people like him. And... Uh, when we had a discussion about the pay rise and what uh, what we could do as a company to stop him 
uh, or to, 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 uh, to, to change his mind, he said that uh, it's only uh, financial stuff. And uh, looking on our cost structure, we, uh, we were not able even to uh, meet his uh, financial uh, demand in, in even 50%. So uh, he received really good salary in euros and he will be still living in uh, Szczecin and working uh, out from Szczecin. Thank you. Kamil, can you uh, explain just in few words what is tier one, tier two in case? All right, so in automotive, you've got OEM, so uh, original equipment manufacturer, meaning uh, companies like BMW, Volkswagen, uh, then tier one, so they are the companies who are just uh, after uh, with OEMs, uh, big companies like Continental, Electrobeat, Aptiv, and I don't know, others. Uh, and tier two are the companies, so in the chain, who cooperate uh, with, with tier one companies. And, and uh, I, I'm not saying that it is not possible to be tier one to OEM from Poland, but it's very rarely, especially when we speak about, uh, uh, let's say, development of, of some uh, platforms for the cars when a company is, needs to sign off for some really big liabilities. So looking from that perspective, uh, in Poland, sometimes even it is easier to be tier two in this chain. Well, I can add that tier one uh, mostly delivers a solution uh, containing the hardware plus software working on this particular hardware. So that would be the, the most uh, difference between uh, tier one and tier two. Yeah, because tier two we are mainly software companies. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. More questions? So I have one question uh, to Camille. What is as to, to him as the CEO of the software company, let's say, um, what is the main need of Polish uh, IT workers when they look for a job? Uh, if they look for a job, I think first one is the uh, financial aspect. So where they can earn uh, more money and the second one is the project meaning what they will do and and whether the project is interesting for them whether they will be able to uh, write software in the technology they like or they would like to uh, learn or um, mainly they are not they don't like projects where you are uh, having only the maintenance phase. So they would like to write, let's say, a real software which will be implemented and the new one, not just to maintain the old projects. And do you know the situation of other um, companies? Are they dealing with the, with the similar challenge? Do you know from the conversations or have you noticed what are they do? How are they positioning themselves now? How, they, how do they deal with this? All right, so first of all, uh, they try to look for employees from Belarus and Ukraine and try to attract them to go come over to Poland. They try to uh, increase salaries for the employees. But, you know, at the same time, there is always financial reasons. So it must be uh, there is a cost side and the revenue side. So it's uh, it's. It's everything about the margin here. So they do small steps around the, uh, on this topic. And yeah, so this is what I'm aware of. So mostly looking for employees uh, on the East and, and uh, bringing Eastern employees here to Poland. And maybe not only Eastern, but from India, from other companies, from Egypt, even uh, to uh, and asking them to move over to, to, to Poland, to Szczecin. And uh, yes, so this is uh, what they try to do. As we are not able to compete with the salaries, with German salaries here in Poland. Great, thank you. More questions? So what do you think, uh, apart of the financial aspects, could uh, could 
make this problem uh, less smaller, a part of the finances? What could be the other thing that would help Polish companies in, in keeping the Polish uh, employees? Uh, definitely, if we, if our government would improve the taxations, and and uh, I mean by improving, I mean to lower the taxation for for um, companies in Poland. So we would be able to spend more money on salaries rather than on the uh, state uh, tax taxes. So lower taxes or other economic incentives that would help companies to be more attractive. Correct. Thank you. And do you know of uh, any incentives that are now available and uh, IT companies use them? Yes. Uh, first of all is R&D tax credit. So if your company do the R&D work, you are able to lower your company tax and the other one is uh, 50% cost uzyskania przychodu. Okay. <laughs> so uh, if your employees write software, I mean mainly uh, or uh, other way around, if mm, you uh, employ employees who do so-called creative work, they are able to pay less taxes. So with the same gross salary, they are able to receive more net salary. Thank you. It helps, but it doesn't solve the problem. So current incentives are not enough. Yes, and uh, looking on the forecast, uh, of, I mean, forecast of this kind of uh, proposal from our government right now, so called New WAD. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that the situation of the Polish uh, IT companies might, might, might even get worse. Because uh, in IT companies, uh, people are uh, earning, let's say, more than 8,000 PLN. So, uh, which is considered right now as being a wealthy person in Poland. So looking from that perspective, uh, once this uh, new tax regulation will be implemented, uh, people in IT industry will be receiving less, uh, less uh, net uh, salaries. That's true. Okay, so I would like to ask Camille about some additional incentives, let's say, but not for companies, but for employees to encourage them, them to, I mean, to keep them at the company. So a part of financial items, a part of uh, salaries, how to encourage employees to stay at the company? Mm, because you mentioned... If I knew that, this person would stay. <laughs> okay. So instead of uh, uh, Camille's ideas, we would rather ask what the companies now do to keep this 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 employees in house. Even if this, those attempts are unsuccessful, what are those attempts? Or maybe there there are no attempts. Just companies let those employees go because they have no idea to how how to keep them. So Camille, do you do you know any moves, uh, marketing moves, uh, HR moves that companies? do to try to keep those people here in Poland? Of course, we provide a set of benefits, but this benefit is, uh, this, uh, set, I mean, this, this benefits are something like every, every single, not every single, but, but uh, many of IT companies provide to uh, their employees. Mm -hmm. So looking from that perspective, it's not kind of dif the differentiator for, for the employees. So they treat it as granted, so they don't really, let's say, um, feel that this is something really extra here. They are just used to this uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. Uh, adding more benefits uh, doesn't change the situation. It just accumulates additional costs on the company side. So you think that the benefits don't have much uh, of a sense? Uh, you know, benefits is something that what employee 
you know, looking on this situation. So if I earn more, more money in euro, I can uh, buy these benefits on my own. So they are not perceived as a particular value. Uh, while when comparing company to company, job offer to job offer, I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Can, can I uh, rotate the problem 180 degrees? Uh, so say, uh, say the, the, the fact that people leave company, uh, the company is a symptom, not a problem. And we can figure out that the problem is that we cannot pay more. So if we cannot pay more, that means that we don't have enough income, which means the problem could be that we should make more income to basically, uh, yeah. So, so the, 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 there may be, might be some solutions in terms of that. So how the company can be more, uh, how the company can compete with the other company, so the income is enough to cover the workers' cost. So, uh, my, Michal, I will stop you there because what you say is is, is a great insight. But this is a, a thing to discuss at the uh, next step. So, when we will deciding what the problem really is, and what you just said is a great illustration that uh, we may be uh, we may find uh, a problem definition from totally different angle. We will go back to that. But for now, we want to uh, exploit. Uh, Camille, as much as we uh, as as it's possible to to have information from the first hand, and in the next step, in a second, we will discuss what the what what the problem really is. So we will we'll go back to that. But th that was great example. But I I just wanted to to think that maybe we should put something that is related to that. I mean, uh, somehow I I don't know how this uh, map can cover this. I mean, they leave because. There is, uh, I don't know, there is not enough salary. So I don't know, projects are too small, maybe. If you, if you know what I mean, just, just trying to find something from the different perspective. I know the, the, the thing is, if you can uh, rephrase it in other words to, uh, to a question that would be directed to Camille. So is there a chance to, to basically uh, what what limits the company to find bigger contracts maybe something like that good mm. in that way uh, definitely one thing is the uh, we can uh, let's say Oh my God. Okay. okay, now it's quiet. Uh, I don't think there is nothing what is limiting us except for, uh, let's say, our imagination while, while we, we, winning the bigger contracts. But uh, to be able to win big contracts, we have to... Um, let's say, be prepared for higher uh, liabilities. And at the same time, uh, it is uh, known and uh, even our government is saying that they are willing that we will, uh, the salaries in Poland will be at the same level like in uh, Western Europe. It's not possible from overnight. So looking from that perspective, if we are having uh, a broad um customer i mean customers from abroad they know what are the uh, market uh, ranges salaries and they know how much they can pay for employees from poland so it's not like that in poland uh, they will be paying us for for example engineers from germany so this is the let's say these are market conditions of course there are uh, there are projects and people in Poland, who are uh, very experienced professionals, and but but uh, still, uh, they are being considered by our customers as people from Poland, and and looking from that perspective, uh, they have some kind of uh, budget limitation, which they can dedicate for outsourcing, or just 
Yeah. So basically, uh, there's no big uh, barrier in getting the bigger contracts, but the market conditions are that international clients know what are the pay range in various countries and they somehow know what what uh, would be the payment expected from from polish companies yeah that somehow influences how much you can earn on a specific project yeah exactly okay so uh, one more question how do you think that the, the problem is that uh, the company should uh, would like to stop this uh, outflow of experienced uh, um, employees or is it more about uh, having a source of acquiring acquiring new employees? What is really the problem that that you that you lack the comp lack the employees, or uh, or you just know that these employees will go, and you just find need to find a, another source of of these employees? What is really the problem? Uh, actually, both. So whenever you bring in a new person to the company, it costs time and it's converted to money that we have to onboard this person. They need to know the code. They need to know how to work within certain teams. They do have to find out how to work with this customer. So looking from that perspective, it's a time consuming thing, which, and this is cost. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we are losing knowledge. So again, if we bring in uh, younger people, not experienced, we spend a lot of time on uh, mentoring them, uh, uh, let's say on training programs. So they gain the knowledge and then this knowledge is uh, going away because people are leaving the company. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing that you want to stop the, the outflow of the employees. And uh, because of the amount of the projects, it is also important that you uh, still get new employees or this is of a less importance? Of course, it is important to get new employees. Thank you very much. Do you have some more questions? Maybe something interested you more? As you can see, I tried to make notes on the empathy map canvas. I must, I may missed something. Do you think we could ask Camille anything more? One, uh, one more question. If I think about the defining challenge, um, how would you um, uh, tell who is the uh, whose pain is it? Because uh, we can say that 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 company, who's in the company, is finally um, responsible for having the the employees. Is it a manager or HR manager, CEO, CEO? Whose whose problem is that? I think that the, I mean I I know it it sounds too generic, but I think this is the problem to the whole uh, organization. Because uh, if we are not losing the person, we have to fill in the gaps. Uh, we might not be able to uh, write uh, the proper and test uh, software before next release. So in my opinion, this is the problem for the whole organization. Mainly for the manager who is responsible for this piece of, 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 uh, of, of, of the software or, or the feature. But all in all, in my opinion, this is organization problem so can we to to stick with something more um specific than organization because it may be too too broad for the exercise that uh person managing an organization uh, i think i mean so internal uh organization so this is the problem for engineering manager or director Engin because I suppose a regular programmer, uh, it, it is not such a big problem for him whether he has a right scope of the task and be good management or not. But I suppose this is not such a big problem for a, for a regular programmer. So that's why I'm asking about the uh, more specific person. And you would say that it's a engineering manager. Uh, or director. Okay, that's good. That's very good, thank you.
Any more questions to Camille? Perfect. So we can uh, we can close the session of this interviewing. Uh, thank you to all that uh, that asked the questions and tried to do this uh, exercise. I thought oh, it, it might be new. Uh, we've got a, a empathy map canvas uh, filled with with the uh, sites quotes uh, of Camille. If it gives us some impression about the, the challenge of, of those Polish uh, companies, uh, we could go and elaborate more. And in the real project, we would ask several people the same questions, had several empathy map canvas, and then we would go have a look at all of them and then try to make a synthesis of everything that we've learned. But because we are here in this exercise environment, uh, we can go uh, to the another step, and this will be uh, the last step before the, the coffee break. Uh, we will skip uh, uh, the client journey map that you can see on the, uh, on the right side of the empathy map. So we will skip client journey. Uh, I think this topic do not require us to, to do the client journey, but instead we'll go to the point of view statement. So the fourth, fourth block, on the on the mirror uh, please go to the fourth block of, of the of the mirror board there's a point of point of view statement and the last thing to discuss and this is the moment that we can take advantage of the empathy map and also use the insight that Michal provided we need to uh, define what the problem is there are many, many things that we talked about, but we need to focus on one, uh, one sentence, one problem that will be the starting point for the ideation after the break. So please feel free. And uh, I hope now many of you will try to, to formulate this point of view. Uh, how do you think, how could we, uh, how could we approach doing this, uh, this sentence? Uh, don't be shy, uh, you can think aloud Let's discuss it the same as we discussed with the empathy map. Uh, give it a try. We will, we will find something together that will be a, a good starting point for another steps. So what's the POV? Who has the idea based on the empathy map? I think IT companies. Can it be such a general phrase, IT companies? We can start with that. And what, uh, what next? I would also say Polish IT companies because the German companies wouldn't have a problem, I think. Uh huh. Uh, they need a way to what? To attract and to attract, uh, let's say, to attract employees and not only attract, but just to uh, not procure them, but just keep them, uh, keep them in the company. To attract and keep the employees. Hmm? So, so to keep actual ones or to attract new ones. Can it be? But this is a different yeah. uh, aim. Yeah. So keep. So in this uh, in the conversation, we were talking about keeping the employees, right? Or making the company attractive too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now this, this this is when it comes interesting, because uh, one proposition would be keep and attract employees, but uh, make company attractive is a new thing, and it would be a different POV. So first, mm -hmm. have a discussion, tell me what do you think it would be good to, to, to try here, in, and then we will make a decision in which direction do we go. So this is a good one. Okay. What else? Do you all see the point of view uh, at the mirror? Are you all here? Because I can see I can see all of you. I've already uh, shared the screen, so you can also uh, see it the Zoom screen, and you can see the point of view statement. I, I mean this board. Okay, so that two sources. So what's, what's more? Attract and keep employees, keep and attract employees, make company attractive. 
how do you feel what else could be the the, the need that a company have Re um, recruit employees from belarus and ukraine for example more efficient yes this I mean, is also a need that that we found in the interview What else? To bring new hires up to speed quickly. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe uh, maybe let's go to the inside. They need this because of what? Why? To run the business without disruption. Hmm? Do you think think of uh, something else? I mean, distraction here means it's a very wide definition. Mm -hmm. Actually, it refers to the business and to the uh, internal organization. So losing and create distraction. Okay. So let's uh, go go deeper. We can uh, stay on this general level, but we can also uh, have options of more detailed insight, like losing employees uh, generates financial loss or makes the company weak weaker and by weaker the what do we mean A financial loss i mean not to be competitive enough so in the way we are losing knowledge from the company mm. Mm -hmm. and support competition somehow without employees the company cannot grow so if the company wants to grow they need to keep employees and to hire new perfect what else or find new business with higher margins <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, other perspectives? Um, Michal, please, uh, pl please go back to, to your uh, insight because it, 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 turned, it turned the problem. Michal, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh... Just uh, you you wanted to, to add the the opposite uh, perspective, yeah. Yeah, this, look at this situation, the circumstances. You you gave us another perspective to the circumstances. Uh, let me think <laughs> a bit. It was something like companies need to find something that would be for you to uh, precise that would allow companies to keep Polish employees in Polish companies, it was something like that. I think it was more about uh, finding uh, better contracts. So we can cover the cost of engineers. So Polish companies need a way to find a better contract so they can keep Polish engineers. Yes. Better paid contracts. 
need a way to find uh, some uh, practical note here that this is um, important to have as diversified team as possible because with the people from various backgrounds, various experiences, there's a bigger chance that someone will propose a problem that will be totally different for the, from the things that all other people are discussing. So what, that's why this is so valuable. I don't know if we will go in this direction, but it is uh, always good to, to, to hear such um, challenging uh, perspective because it's different that, uh, from what we uh, already said. So find better paid contracts uh, because, Michal, can you repeat? Because uh, they, because they, they, I don't know how to uh, name that, but basically the thing is that uh, they need to cover engineers' cost, uh, and and engineers are are expensive, so if if you want to have the best one, the best ones you need to pay more. Because the best engineers are expensive. Yeah, exactly. I also added something to the chat. Uh, maybe that can be added somehow. To the hmm. empathy map? Or where did you add it? In the chat, uh, HR managers ah, of Polish chat. IT companies need a way to convince workers to stay in the company because German companies pay higher salaries. So I think uh, the need is because we have to have money for um, salary increase. I think so. Michal, am I right? Yeah. Need a way to convince workers to say. Okay, I will put uh, it. It's not exactly about money, maybe the way to convince workers is different maybe if you give them free houses <laughs> i don't know but exactly uh, but the, the thing is that uh, because people want to stay close to the family and friends usually or maybe if you give them free vacations uh, in the mm -hmm. egypt i don't know but something that basically makes them enough happy to omit the higher salary <laughs> from the german company Perfect. So now I think we've got uh, enough input uh, to make a decision. And as you can see in each of the three fields, we have uh, many options. And when multiplied, there's a lot of possible POVs that we could um, choose, but we need to stick with one. So now is the question. Uh, now is the question and please everyone spend a minute and decide, uh, is it Polish IT company or is it engineering director or is it HR manager? What's the need and what's the insight? And in a second, we will do the voting. So I will stick to Polish IT companies. Uh, let's, let's try uh, because I haven't used it in Miro before. There is a voting. Okay. Uh, there's a voting functionality, so we've got the possibility to test it. We have it on Zoom also, polls. But I haven't tried it yet. Here we could uh, try to, to just yes. se select the post-its. So I think it okay. might be useful. Yeah, I, I, I think the POV should be, like uh, Hubert said, uh, human-centric. And the IT company is not a human, so... Uh, that's why I opt for something that relates to a real person. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so now I... Yeah, so now at the POV, you should have the possibility to select three uh, post-its. So please select one position in each element. So one target group, one need, and one uh, insight. And let me know if it works. I made something wrong. I mean, 
the screen is so small. Can you please fix it, Robert? So you need to just zoom in again to the point of view block because it it showed me the entire okay. wall, but I just zoomed in into the point of view. But it's not so easy. Okay. Do you see those uh, crosses? Yes, 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 yes. Now I can see. Thank you. Okay, the voting has ended, and I suppose not all of you uh, managed to do it in the time. Yes, exactly. Okay, sorry for that. So let's try again with a longer time so there's no rush in, in selecting. So everyone, uh, in a second when I will select the place, Sorry for that, we have now five minutes, so select again the things that you believe should be in the POV. Okay, to vote, so we have to just click vote now, and then what do we do? You, you, you should see a plus symbol next to each post-it, and you click this plus, and you've got three votes, so one vote for target group, one vote for need, and one vote for insight. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I finished the voting, but I'm not so sure. Mm, did I finish just for myself or for everybody? You click it done. Yes. So I just learned it is for yourself. Okay. The Thank voting you. is still uh, on two minutes left. Uh, unless everybody else is already finished or someone is still deciding, please tell me. Have everyone finished voting or someone is still deciding? Okay, so I suppose everyone decided, so I will 
and voting. The results are not being processed. Okay. Um, uh, do you see now the results or only I can see it as a host of this board? I can see it only on the, on the Zoom shared screen. I can see results on the left. Yeah. On the left, yeah, okay. So what do we see here? So uh, because these Polish companies were divided into two post-its, they uh, uh, together gathered four, four, uh, four votes, then I would say we stick with Polish companies. Uh, I would, uh, as I think it was uh, Michal suggested, we should go more into some specific person, but uh, that's okay. We can test with this approach uh, because this is testing and it's iterative. Maybe in uh, another iteration, we would decide to make it more specific to some particular uh, position, but okay, let's keep with the Polish IT company. Need a way to make company attractive has received the, uh, the most voices because losing people means losing knowledge. And this is the, the cool part of the process. We all heard the same interview. Everyone had a chance to ask a question and uh, everyone heard answers. And based on the same things that we, uh, we heard, we had many ideas what is the problem behind the circumstances that we are discussing and with use of this voting which is often used uh, in a situations that there is no uh, right or wrong answers but there are opinions voting is uh, commonly used and with this voting voting we decided that our PO view for now would sound that polish it company needs a way to make a company attractive because losing people means losing knowledge. And this is a specific sentence that will guide us to the ideation session that we will do right after the break. Uh, and now the break would be a longer one, 30 minutes. So we meet again at uh, 10 minutes to two. Please tell me if uh, everything's clear. Uh, do you want to uh, discuss something before the break? I have no more questions. I think it's perfect time to start our lunch break. <laughs> so guys, <laughs> see you soon. See you in uh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Uh, 150. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Okay, everyone, it's 150. 30 minutes half has, uh, has left. Please let me know on the chat if you are already here. Let's wait one last minute and we'll go back to the process. Okay, so this is the place that we stopped at the coffee. I hope you had a good coffee break or you had a lunch and we can start the last part of the, of the workshop. I can tell you that defining what we need to deal with is the hardest part of the, of the process. Now it is the the, the easier part. So we concluded with the point of view that Polish company needs a way to make the company attractive because losing people means losing knowledge. And having this uh, point of view statement, this is our definition of the problem. And this is the, the, the challenge that we want to solve with any of the solutions that we will um, thought of uh, in a following section. So now we will go into the brainstorming uh, exercise and there is a lot of tools, but uh, because we need to focus on the process itself, I, would not, I will not elaborate on the various methods, but as I said, if you are interested in this particular uh, element, please let me know after the workshop and I will provide you some more information. Now we will stick with the, the regular brainstorm uh, and its 
the most fundamental rules. First, we are building on the ideas of others. I know every one of us is perfect individual, but in this approach, we are working together and we are building on the ideas of others. That's why try and do this as an exercise, try to do, uh, try to uh, say yes and instead of yes, but or no, but. We are going to the quantity. There will be a lot of bad ideas, crazy ideas, even stupid ideas. That's absolutely fine. This is what we are aiming at. And we want to go into quantity instead of quality. Um, at the stage of just ideating, creating ideas, don't go into too big, de de too much detail, uh, stick with the headlines, like it was the headline in the newspaper. So, so it's just the main idea, the keyword that you can elaborate later. Uh, and there's this uh, distinction between improving something 10% or improving something 10 times. So we want to go with the, with the second one, uh, aim at big solutions, big changes. Don't be afraid that it is undoable. This is do not what we care about at this stage. And the last bullet point, don't judge. At this point, we are not considering all the ideas from the feasibility or the viability perspective. Now we want just as many ideas as possible. And those ideas may be crazy, stupid. And it's not a problem. This stupid idea of, 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 of you may be a great inspiration for someone else who will, in two minutes, will propose something uh, that will be really useful. So don't worry if those ideas will make no sense. This is normal for this um, exercise. And the first part of this exercise is called brain dump uh, to, um, to lose uh, ourselves from the, from the ideas that we already have somewhere uh, in the back of our heads. Uh, it's always the case. So in order to make a good teamwork where, where you will be discussing ideas and you will be building or uh, on ideas of other people first we need to write down all the ideas that you already have in your mind so we will do uh, this in a first uh, uh, in a first stage of the ideation and the, let's move to the my row i will keep the, the the presentation here let's move to the my row we will jump between my row and uh, and the slides so now please everyone go to the uh, the online wall and right after the point of view you can see this brainstorm area so this will be our place to to putting all the ideas and now let's have three, four minutes. The, this, the space is quite big. Use post-it notes to write down all the ideas for solving our POV, solving, solving our challenge that you already have. Uh, in this brainstorm area, choose your corner, choose your part or this, of this board and write down all, all your ideas as you have now. Is it clear? Do you have questions? So right now we have to uh, gather our ideas how to solve problem that uh, that we are losing employees and we are losing knowledge and we are an IT company and and yeah so yeah, how to I, solve this? So. I will uh, write how might we. I'm writing at the top of this brainstorm area. How might we help Polish IT companies? Uh, in making company attractive. attractive so it not loses employees. So that would be the first how might we and uh, a question to ask. And yeah, now for the couple of minutes, we write all ideas that we already have, how we could solve this one.
tell me, are you all on the online platform? Because I don't see your, I can see you all. I can see there's Camille, Magda, Kate now. Uh, for the rest, is the exercise clear? Uh, Hubert, we have a request from uh, Jarek Vexej. Yeah. Um, uh, Jarek is asking for a link to Miro. Okay. Because Just he would like to join us. My, my Zoom was restarted and the chat is empty. Okay. Just a second. In Czechian, we have better connection than in Piochowo. <laughs> you should now see it in the chat window. Yes, it is a problem of internet connection, really. Wow. Has something big happened here? That's me. I moved it left because it will be better on my screen, but I see You so have I... to navigate with arrows. I will <laughs> yeah. I will delete the border. We we actually don't need it, so.
Okay, one more minute and we will uh, go further. Okay, thank you for, 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 for this. Uh, there's no uh, new post-its or they are not appearing so quickly as a second ago. So I think we uh, have run out of the most um, obvious ideas or the ideas that you have already prepared. So uh, in the meantime, I have prepared a couple of um, how might we questions that will uh, maybe may be helpful uh, in generating new ideas. You can see it be below the, this, this area. So how might we make IT companies so attractive it doesn't need to look for employees? How might we help companies that losing employees is not a problem because we got the assumption that it is a problem? Or how might we use companies' knowledge to attract new employees? How might we use loyalty programs, programs, as you know, from other commercial businesses to keep employees? So four propositions from me. If you've got idea for um, some additional how might we, please feel free to, to, to write them down. And now we will go into the next stage of the, of the brainstorming, where uh, I will ask each of you to tell us what you have written down. Um, every one of you and while, while you will be talking and the rest of you while you will be listening, try to look if there are some similarities, similar questions. If you see similar uh, ideas, if you see similar ideas, just uh, uh, drop them and put them together so we are creating a groups of, of, of similar uh, ideas, we will cluster the ideas. Uh, a volunteer to start to, to, to tell us what you presented. Please show yourself. So I put on the board um, change of management style towards decentralization. And I meant uh, to give, to offer uh, employees uh, a higher level of independence and in decision making. Um, to make them more responsible and also more, let's say, free somehow in their in the decision process. Um, and also, I put here offering attractive projects to employees, which somehow is um, maybe not doubled, but mm -hmm. somewhere I I can see some um, similar um, phrases. Let's say here. Um, for example, 
create more friendly working atmosphere. Uh, and also here, changing business model to become tier one company. So it also mm -hmm. about attractive uh, conditions. But I like okay. the most bribe employees with Tesla cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the similar create pillow fight sessions. Mm -hmm, yes. Okay, thank you. So, so uh, please, another person, uh, tell what you got, and we will look for the similarities in uh, in the meantime. I put present some additional benefits to um, for employees because not always uh, the the wage is the only um, factor. Sometimes it's something uh, in in addition, but <laughs> sometimes the additions that we have are not very attractive. So this is quite big bucket of many ideas uh, for the additional benefits. Mm -hmm. But as uh, one of the um, things that can be attractive to, to make a company attractive is to define career path uh, for employees that he knows that what kind of goals needs to be achieved to uh, step up or uh, the other thing is uh, their own progress, whether uh, the company offers like trainings, um, paid trainings or exams, uh, certificates or something like that, because this is a personal uh, progress that um, not only company will benefit, but the, uh, the employer, employee will benefit on that. And uh, educate managers to be proactive to listen is um, this is the first uh, point of contact to um, to recognize whether the uh, employee is satisfied with the work or there's something missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Who's next to reveal his ideas? Yeah, so I can just talk about mine. Um, so the first one was just to give employees more flexibility around working hours. This is actually a huge factor. I've no, I you know I spotted uh, in my previous project when I was uh, in a hiring position and also on myself. So the best, you know, let's say there are a few examples. When you have kids, you have to drop them off or pick them from the kindergartens, preschools, whatever. It's always better to have some kind of a flexibility on your schedule, so you don't have to have like you know eight working hours per straight, 10, 12, whatever you, uh, you know, you work in, but more flexibility because right now it's, I think it's really a really good thing to, to, you know, to develop and to have in a company. Uh, project team rotation, reduce productivity per head count, but building a film, blah, blah, blah. So actually what I've meant is that um, you have to have, uh, let's, I, I, I've noticed that my, my previous employees, were getting bored really quickly. It was not actually a, you know, for like an IT company, but we work a lot on a lot of IT tools. However, the rotation gave me the, you know, gave them the feeling that there is, you know, they're learning a lot. They have, they can give a lot of input and create new process. It was a startup. So that's, you know, in startups, that's, that's the most important thing. However, that, you know, that, that experience showed me that this is really, really important for me to give the feedback from the team, which you have, you can see on all, you know, the remaining of my, of my, um, of my points and actually the team rotation reduces the productivity but generates more creativity in the team and releases a lot of stress that's that's what i would have noticed uh, the third one visualize employees as heroes they have to be part of something unique and awesome uh, i know there are a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of um, um, a lot of, uh, you can say, not work, but a lot of development being done on, you know, we, we have a new uh, type of employees right now on the market, right? They're not baby boomers. Uh, they're little, they, all the new employees uh, want to be more concerned and want to be more heard. Uh, they want to be more seen uh, as, a, as a unique per, a unique person, not just a, like a wheel in the, in the factory. So that's something that has to be uh, pointed out. 
a Creed pillow fight session between teams. That was actually one of the ideas I, I created, and, <laughs> and it was, it, it's a it's a it's a real thing, and it was uh, provided because of first of the session you know, when I was a managing I guess a managing director, uh, the team said that actually half of them wanted to quit at some point because there was a lot of traction at the beginning of the startup, and after the cleansing session and all the pillow fights, uh, we had really really a uh, huge progress, and you know this, this was my individual experience that. You know, it gave a lot of a lot of positive feedback from the team, and it worked. I know it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's it's it was more for the more small startups or for small teams, actually. But uh, that was something I you know I really liked, and it's it's just like uh, you know getting out of the box, and the guys really loved it as well. And also put a lot of pressure on listening and managing feedback from all team members, not only top down and bottom up. But I think this is just a part of what Magda just said: the change of management to, uh, style towards decentralization. So just this is basically something that to show uh, we're listening to the uh, to the team and we want to give them more, uh, you know, more responsibility. So, as I said, they're feeling more unique and more, uh, you know, they have more impact on the whole business. So basically, that's it. So, yep. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, I can see we still have some post-its ideas. Okay, I can. Share mine. Yes, please. So first one is changing business model to become tier one company. So maybe in that way, a company will look more attractive to its employees. Bribe employees with Tesla cars. Uh, I think it's self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, introduce bonus retention scheme. So basically, if employees stay in the company for some period of time, they receive some kind of extra bonus. Uh, more introduce more professional development programs uh, for some uh, software developers. It is important that they work in, uh, let's say, innovative uh, projects at the same time using, um, let's say, trendy uh, or, or important for them technologies. So maybe if the project is not, there are no projects in uh, desired by them technology, they are able to still develop skills uh, in, in other technologies than the running projects. Uh, succession programs. Uh, and this is the situation. So for example, if we are losing very experienced person, <clears throat> it always, I mean, in, according to Polish legislation, it always has to be a one or three months time before this person leaves. So uh, by introducing this program, people will be able to, who will replace them, they might be able to, uh, for, uh, they might be able to onboard quicker and to start be much more, uh, to start to be fully operational quicker. Mm -hmm. And um, po, po, po more trainee programs so sometimes in the company you just need fresh blood so by doing that uh you know just you have to invest maybe a little bit more in having some in commas spare uh, team members just in case anything happens so you will have already replacement so you will not have to just start a recruitment process and then actually uh, in that way waste your time mm -hmm. mm, ask employees more frequently about their professional goals sometimes employee just tell you that their aim is just to go abroad and work for some i don't know volkswagen bmw or whatever company so uh, it is straightforward that this person will stay at your company by some time but in the long run most probably uh, this person will lose so it gives you already direction and indication of what you should do so maybe succession program or or uh, yeah plan the replacement of mm -hmm. this person in the some future cool that's interesting uh, uh, I, th I think these are all uh, ideas that we now have or have i missed something Okay, so as you can see, I started to, to group the similar ideas uh, into clusters. And please help me with that. The, the, the first thing that I can see here is about uh, 
making an em emphasis on listening to uh, to to our employees so we can learn what are their goals uh, so we can uh, have a dialogue with, with employees and try to adapt to their needs this is the first uh, theme that is visible here i can see uh, those two career path development programs it's basically about the possibility uh, for the employee to grow uh, inside the company. Uh, what I also find here is creating friendly atmosphere. It goes in line with this uh, crazy idea for the pillow fights. So, so, so atmosphere in the company. Um, change of management into giving more accountability to employees. I think it's in line with the flexibility about the working hours, but if you have different opinion, just let me know. Uh, this bribing employees with, uh, with fancy car, it's of course an additional benefit, uh, bonus schemes, exactly. So please have a look at the list now and uh, seeing all this, let's discuss what else could we, uh, could we do, I think that offering attractive projects to employees may go in line with uh, changing business model to tier one, tier one uh, company. And going in this line, uh, a part of changing the business model, which is also an option, what else uh, can a company do to, to attract, to, to offer attractive projects? What do you think? So I would say acquiring new new clients. That might be one of the options. It depends what it means, attractive project, because that will huh. always mean something different for people. So I think um, it's a company job to present any project as attractive. So oh. this is something like internal PR, because um what does it mean attractive project mm -hmm. because the final product is attractive and the developer is doing the same job for number of years every day everything is the same but the final product is attractive or attractive is that he's jumping between different projects doing different lines uh, so everything depends what it means attractive project and because sometimes profile for the company is not attractive but the project may be attractive because it's um i don't know a language that is not very common or i don't know so that's a good very good insight and in terms of ideas for solution what what could we do to sell project as attractive so I, I meant because i'm the author of this note so i meant attractive project maybe not product not the final result but i meant uh, this decision making process and uh, um, i meant tasks which can be challenging somehow for employees not um, not boring ones but challenging or maybe uh, showing that their wor work impact the final something mm -hmm. that their ideas may may make change on the mm -hmm. um, process final product or the element of the final product. So, um, yep. You know, uh, for Avid, these are all attractive projects because everything is about broadcasting, what can be more attractive than movies and broadcasting. But still, the developers can say this is not attractive project. So mm -hmm. it's not about the final product for sure. So I think, as you mentioned, the, um, the process, the seeing the impact, mm -hmm. 
So I think it goes in line with this purple post-it to visualize employees as a heroes that they've been part of something awesome. Yeah. How, how could we go further with that? How, how, how to show them as heroes? How to make them feel like they're part of something uh, important? So I'm going with hero of the month. Hero of the month wall that will be visible somewhere in the uh, in the well visible part of the company. Quite cheeky, I know. Uh, I I just try to stop not to judge it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it will make you think of something else. Yes, and... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I can see that this introduce more trainee programs may go somewhere in line with, uh, with this one how employees can develop their own <laughs> progress maybe it's a it's a way uh, to give the flexibility not only for the working hours but also some bigger program to um to customize the 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 training path from from, from your perspective in organizations how is it with the flexibility of the training paths Could you repeat that? I mean, what do you mean about the flexibility of the training path? Is is there is there a space for making that training paths more uh, customizable by employees, or or the training paths are defined, or, and employee may use it or not? Maybe some some something with making those those training paths more flexible. Uh... Okay. I think that uh, one thing is that uh, the company could provide the trainings um, to the uh, to the uh, employees, and the employees could choose what training can take or what can be would be valued for them. But what I meant here also is that uh, there may be some kind of budget for external trainings that uh, quite often companies do not offer that at all. And then the, the employee could choose. So this is flexible from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And from your experience, does employer just um, secure some amount of money, amount of money for external trainings? Uh, that employees may use or it is more like an agreement with a specific training company uh, and employees may use uh, offer of one, two or three companies that have agreement with the, with the employer. How is it done? It depends on the company. So quite often this is something that um, it's already uh, defined with a company, as you said, uh, an external company that um, provides some kind of trainings, but usually these are very generic trainings. So uh, not always are uh, that much um, attractive because um, the most attractive trainings are like the, the one with certificates, which are paid on a separate one. And these are usually not um, 
um, in this company bucket. So uh, I would say that there should be an additional budget for external external trainings, maybe not available on yearly basis, but same as with career path. If you are if you reach some goal, we can have some money for your additional training outside the company. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this uh, clarification. I think we can try. Um, we can try to use this how might we questions. Um, and let's go with this tricky one that is challenging uh, an assumption. So the question is how might we help company that losing employees is not a problem? I know this is a tricky one. Let's try to find something. How might we help company that, so losing employee would not be a problem. It's really tricky because I guess they don't need help. Yeah, so right? what, what this company should do, what to change, how to adapt, that losing, losing employee would not be a problem anymore. Oh, okay. I understood it in a bad way. Okay, now, now I got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's easier to refresh all the processes with new people inside and to see that uh, to adapt processes to the current world with uh, the some people moves out from the company but assuming that there will be some new fresh blood mm -hmm. yeah, but this is a u.s model of business <laughs> um yeah throw people out quickly and get new ones um but you always lose some productivity in the first uh, in the first no no i mean something else that uh, here is a problem that um the team is very old. I mean, stuck with the, the um, with the com uh, company for the many years, like 10, 17, something like that. So the cost of people are very high and there is no fresh blood, blood. So maybe there is the knowledge is in the company. But the thing is that um, there is no fresh fresh blood. There is no low cost employee. So anything that is done generates low margin. So uh, if some person moves out from the company and a new employee will come, that's a great thing for that team. Yes, and, uh, and at the same time, uh, the company needs to make sure there's uh, the previous employees they're uh, letting off. They don't have the whole uh, tribal knowledge from the company. Absolutely, Their yeah. Documentation process and everything yeah. in place. Please, please then, put yes. post it uh, on, on the wall so, so we don't miss what you're telling. Okay, go on. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I, I thought I finished. Okay, yeah, but just... when you say something, it's 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 all good ideas. Please remember remember to put the post-its on the wall so so we do not lose what you're what you what you're telling. Okay. Um so I don't know how to summarize this. <laughs> give, give it a try. Um and in the meantime, uh, Michal, I think it was you now tell, speaking. Yes. So for what you said, I would also um, prepare a post-it. You told that, that the knowledge should be managed. So once an uh, employee is going away, his, his knowledge does not go away with him. Well, was it that? Yeah, exactly. I'll just write it down. Okay. okay. So, what else might we do that so losing comp employees is not a problem? To create maybe some kind of 
ecosystem that they have access to uh, experienced employees. So basically they can always count on the fresh blood to the company and they are not worried that that losing of the employee will impact the business. So like uh, there was a group of companies that have an agreement to, to, to share some of the workforce? To, to, to... For, for example, or cluster IT can be some, this kind of platform here in stretch. Definitely great idea. Another idea I will propose is to frequently change the uh, project. So the so you have some kind of redundancy and people are skilled in few projects. So if you lose someone from one project, you can uh, quickly move another one person from another project who has a skill in the project. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's why we can do the rotations, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah this is about this rotation here, here on the project. Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. I didn't notice it. Yes. So good that you are going back to this. And I think it would uh, fit with what just Camille said about creating this uh, supporting group of companies like Cluster here in Szczecin. Uh, Camille, have you uh, put it as a post-it? So we no. can group it? No, I didn't. I added losing an employee may force company to change, to change a process or to change approach to, to make a change, like in general, to go farther, not to be stuck in the same place. Yes, so and in the same time improve, right? The old habits yeah. and all the process. Yeah. I'll so, add it, yeah, please. Improve. So in other words, uh, this was Camille's idea to change business model to tier one, but maybe uh, the option was to, is also to change business model just to adapt to the new reality that uh, employees may go away quicker and we just need to adapt the processes. So this uh, rotation just is bigger and we are able to to handle project with this bigger rotation maybe it's about changing the processes yeah agree okay so um, I know this is a, a energy consuming exercise, but we uh, already have some good uh, themes that emerged. We've got uh, uh, groups, clusters of the ideas that you can see. Uh, and I think we can now go into the uh, stage of choosing the, uh, the topic that seems uh, the most promising to you. Now, uh, we do not assess uh, in specific, uh, uh, according to a specific criteria that we would do later on, but the criteria that we can now use, everyone uh, of you, is if this idea or the set of the ideas would be desirable to companies, uh, if it's feasible to, 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 be, to be done, and if it's viable. Uh, in, in a later stage of the project, we would discuss the more uh, specific criteria, but for now we can just uh, assess it individually, if it's desirable, if it's feasible, but not going too much into the details because it's very early stage. So we're looking more on the overall attractiveness or the uh, how much is this idea in interesting done? How much is it uh, possible to be done in a technological manner, for example? So uh, let's do a voting again, uh, spend some two, three minutes uh, before that to, to have a quick view over all those ideas. And after that, you will have three votes again, but this time you can 
use those three votes however you wish. Um, you can add uh, all those three votes to, to one group of ideas, so for one topic, or, or you can select three, three topics uh, giving for each one the one vote. Uh, and with this democratic approach, we will select an idea that we will try to uh, elaborate a bit more uh, in the last uh, stage of the process, which would be the early prototyping. So I will now turn the voting on. Where is this uh, pillow fight? <laughs> oh no, I, I found it. Okay, fine. <laughs> Vote per person three. Okay, and you should have now this voting active. So it doesn't matter which particular post it you you choose. We we're voting on the entire um, groups. And let's have five, six minutes to, to, to first uh, read again all the things and then, um, and only then having a vote. Please tell me if it's uh, clear what we are doing now or you have some questions. It's clear. Clear. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, are, are you all ready or someone needs one more minute to, to, to finish the voting? I'm ready. 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 Okay, so I'm I'm closing this voting. Do you see the results? No. 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 Hmm. So, okay, so maybe only I see it. And the winner is... Okay, so I will count it. Okay, so the second place exact for would be um, organizing a rotation with two votes. Oh, sorry, there's another that has three votes. Three votes goes to the change of management style towards the decentralization and uh, flexibility of the employees. That was three votes. And we've got exec for winner with four votes the first one this topic of uh, educating managers to to listen to the needs of the employees so this group about listening the needs it got four votes and the second one that that got the four votes is prepare a career path uh, introduce more professional development programs so we've got two uh, two themes that have uh, received the uh, the biggest applause and now it is up to you should we choose only one of them or do you have idea how could we combine those two ideas and and work on them together it's a discussion how do you think So the career path and managers. And this, yep, yep. Okay. Everyone, tell what you think. I think it might be one kind of uh, group because career path definitely needs to happen together with managers. So they have to be proactive and try to find a solution for and develop but, a plan. But actually, career path is something that should be developed by, rather by HR. So it's less managers, more HR. But, uh... but if you follow the career path, I think it's not it's written, it's not purely HR. Okay. Because on every single stage, you get manager who has to approve it or, or give indication, the person who will rate your performance. Others, what do you think? So with this, uh, with this kind of discussion, what we can do, and it's of, uh, often done in the process, I will create another voting that will be very short, uh, and, and I, will, I will prepare uh, the place for voting. The first one I will call career path. Second one is listening to employees. And the third is combining both. And now a quick voting. Please select if you want to go with the only career path and um, elaborating more, only listening to employees 
and elaborating more on that? Or do you want to try in the next step to combine it somehow together? We Now we don't know how it would look like, but it is your decision that we need to make as a designers in this process. Just a second, I will prepare. The voting session is over. Yeah, it was by mistake. Oh, Just okay. give me a second. Create a voting session. I will change the area. I'm setting the area of the voting so it's clear. This time only one vote to give. And it should start now. Only career path only listening to employees or we do somehow combine both in our solution. Okay, is everyone ready or we need to wait a bit more? I voted. Ready. ready. Okay. So I'm ending the voting and for all. <laughs> okay. So we've got uh, three votes on listening to employees and we've got four votes to combine those two. So this is our uh, uh, common decision that we will somehow need to combine both ideas. So the solution would be based that there is some career path that is more sophisticated professional development program. And at the same time, um, it is a solution for the managers to, to educate them how to um, have a bigger attention for the needs uh, of employees. So now we, we know this is the thing that we want to uh, prepare. And now we need to think what would be the best way to prepare a first prototype. The next uh, is the, this prototype will be very, very early prototype so that we have some initial assumptions about this idea. How do you think, based on your experience, uh, should we use business model canvas or the service blueprint just to play a bit with, uh, with the tools? Or maybe you want to prepare uh, a poster that would, that would include some general um, assumptions, general ideas about this uh, initiative, this solution. How do you think how we can go with that? So we have to choose the business model or service service blueprint. Or for example, we can prepare a, even something like poster, which, uh, which would uh, include, for example, the key topics, the like, like a slogan that would be the information. I, I, I suggest we can use the business model canvas uh, as a framework, not all, uh, not all uh, the fields will be important here, but we can look for the fields that are somehow relevant to make a, a quick work on how this solution should uh, should work like. So what, what do you think about this approach? Let's do it. You, yeah. are, the, you are the expert here. <laughs> so if we're going into the customer segments, 
let's think about who, who would be the user of this solution that we're going to. I suppose uh, we should include here, how would you call them? Programmers or engineers? What would be yeah. the most, the more relevant? Which one? Software developers. Software developers, thank you. Okay, but on the other hand, um, managers. Yes. So maybe I will use different color for managers. We'll see if we'll have differences in uh, in the other fields regarding developers and managers. Goes here. Okay, so what's the value proposition for software developer? What's for him in it? Some internal career programs, educational program. And why do why does he need it? Uh, What's the value? Why would he care about this program? Uh, to fulfill some development needs and to increase their um, value somehow of, on labor market. Oh, that's what I understand. That once he used this career program, he improves his skills and he is more attractive on the market. Yes. Yeah. And that's quite important. And what's the value for IT manager? Mm, to have better qualified team to meet quicker and better, to, to reach quicker and better, um, in a better way, goals. So to reach more business goals, to be more effective. Mm -hmm. Attain, reach uh, more ambitious um, projects. Mm. Competitive projects, yeah. Be more competitive at the market. For the manager? Uh, yeah. For the actually, that would be for the cus, uh, company, but. Okay, so now the question, what resources would be required for having those two elements of the offer? What would, what would be required by the company to have? What should the company have? Budget. <laughs> <laughs> And a plan. Time, time. And the right people. Good HR. <laughs> Are we revealing Avid's problem now? <laughs> Why? Uh, just, just guessing. What activities, what would need to be done in order to have this solution? Analysis of the market, whether which, which kind of a qualities uh, career paths are really important in this uh, place, what we want to achieve. 
where we want to go? Is it uh, in line with our uh, strategical uh, approach, our I don't know, business model or not? So the company would need to conduct a market research to, to see what, um, what is now attractive on the market. So the company can propose such an offer to developers. Okay, it makes sense, market research. Yeah, because we can train the guy with some kind of a, a skills uh, or some kind of a certifications we may pay for them. But if we will not use that in our company, then we have no value. The guy only has the value of his uh, of himself on the market. Okay, so there must be alignment between what developers want and what company needs. Uh, yes, exactly. Perfect. Something important to do on the beginning or on a regular basis? Uh, can you say that again? Sorry, I've been lost. Is there anything that would need to be done in terms of activities? either at the beginning of this new something or something that would need to be conducted on a regular basis. I suppose if we have a career program or a, um, it would be also a training program for managers to, to be more emphatic managers and to try to, to get in contact with the employees. Uh, do you think there should be some uh, regular assessment of the, the KPIs of such a system that would be implemented? Maybe not. I have a feeling that that would be quite difficult to measure. Um, although I was thinking about that one thing, just give me a second. <laughs> I lost that. Um, I think periodical internal communication would be important here, just to remind everyone about the programs. Ah, and... uh, about the key activities. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, maybe that's not valid, but uh, whenever we uh, raise the value of the person, of the guy on the market, by training that guy, we also should have gotten the knowledge uh, how much this kind of a people uh, are worth on the market so that we may we can or and we will align this guy's salary uh, with uh, what is on the market and what other companies can prop give him to get him from uh, our uh, company so uh, like a benchmark on wages on the market uh, yes yeah some kind of a benchmark that will uh, take into consideration uh, the factors of those particular trainings that we will uh, provide to the guy. Mm -hmm. Because we may train him, we may have a budget for the training itself, but he will leave in six months because of <laughs> his worth much more than yeah. somewhere else. And if we're talking, I, I suppose this um, overall, we could call it somehow of a training um, program for a different level employees like software developers, but IT managers also another type of employees. So we would have this training program for employees. Do you think it would be beneficial to, to have a cooperation with some external partners. For what? For I providing trainings? Yes, but for um, define career path or to validate whether everything is going in the right di direction. Not sure. I, I could say that uh, 
if we will make kind of an agreement with our tier one customer uh, of the the roadmap where we want to go, what kind of qualities we want to train in our company, then we may uh, try to, um, I don't know, mutually do something, do some internal projects, some proof of concepts that could uh, improve those uh, those qualities of the people. Oh, that's interesting. And this is the idea could, that could uh, join a couple of dots here. So if we have a long-term agreement with the tier one customer, we could know what are their strategic intentions. And having that in mind, we could uh, agree that for the following half year, year or two years, we will have a uh, adequate uh, training programs for our employees and everyone wins because this tier one customer knows that he will have even more skilled uh, people uh, at his partner's company. The IT company have the uh, good feeling that the em employees are feel satisfied with the educational and this professional development offer. And employees also have something interesting because they know that the skills that, that, that they can acquire in this training program are uh, strategically attractive for the market because these are the skills that were required by, by some big uh, company that is the customer of, 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 of his or her employee employer. So cool. So I think about external experts, which uh, who may be useful for some companies, maybe not for every company, and maybe some business partners. I mean, um, to have to have the knowledge about uh, future projects and future needs of competences. So, uh, like experts on the. Uh, Forecasting, strategic, strategic future thinking. No, no, I meant um, external experts um, in the area of human resources to create career path and to support company. Because Kate mentioned that it's not needed, but I guess it is. Uh, it depends on the company. So we can put this HR somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. For most of the cases, it would be internal, but okay. uh, this is the thing that we can play with these visual tools. So we can put it on the middle. And mm -hmm. by this, we s signalize that it is both internal, but it may be also external. Any more experts? or external partners? I think this agreement with tier one uh, clients is, is really cool thing. Uh, I suppose as this is an internal program, um, it's not relevant to discuss the revenue streams because this is a typically for a business venture. So we would discuss some external revenue streams. But the question is in terms of customer relationships relationships or, or the channels, do you think it would be relevant to pinpoint something specific about how to uh, reach um, employees or how to, uh, how to relate about this, this program? Maybe it's, it would require some different communication at, as uh, as it is now in the company, or maybe it would be the, exactly the same procedure of the communication. Uh, Camille mentioned this, 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 this regular communication. So based, I think it, it can be moved here, like a kind of relationship. Um, would we use some, some 
internal marketing like publishing success stories or, or it's not uh, relevant something else how do you think from one point of view success stories would uh, attract more people it would allow us also to get more resources from the market on the other hand uh, it would <laughs> it would uh, announce uh, the other uh, the competitors who can take our experts that okay hey hello guys we have those you can have them <laughs> something like that <laughs> okay so one last question because now i'm thinking that revenue is not exactly the thing that we need here but uh, in order to make this a business case we would need uh, to be clear what is a uh, profit of the company that would try to deliver this kind of program so instead of revenue think about non-economic or economic profit but let's have a quick discussion last thing what would be the kpis that we could measure if this kind of uh, initiative makes sense Maybe less number of complaints from the clients. So a, a better, better quality of service, quicker, um, less mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be, what else? Could you, could you repeat what, what are we looking for right now? Last thing, uh, profit for the company that we could measure in some way. So think about the KPIs that we could use to measure the... Uh... So at attrition report, meaning that less people uh, leaving the company. Yeah, definitely. What's more? Maybe uh, or other way around, number of promotions, meaning that people are following the career path, so they develop themselves and they are being promoted. Cool. Anything else? Maybe the level of satisfaction of the work. Oh, yeah. Like with the employee net promoter score how do you count it i would rather think about survey uh regular survey uh for the uh, employees okay. something else Okay, cool. So this is the uh, canvas that we drafted in a couple of minutes for, for, for the idea of the program that we could use both for employees and for the managers that would aim finally finally in the, in the situation that the number of people living uh, is decreasing and the satisfaction of both employees and customers uh, is increasing. And this is a thing that after uh, some longer preparations we could um, present to others and I will now go back to the uh, slides if you can if you can please go back to the to the zoom so I stopped sharing so you can share yes, your screen. yes yes thank you done it this was done now uh, this this workshop is quite specific because we are work, working only in the one group so there's uh, so there's no space for for presenting if we had two teams the teams would be working uh, separately uh, in the breakout rooms and now we would go back to the uh, one general uh, channel and here we would have the presentation of the other idea 
I'm sure the other idea would be totally different than yours. And the last step of the process before we can jump into iteration is, uh, is, is presenting the prototype. And the uh, rule for the, the testing is, as you can see, is very popular. Design as you were right. That's why we make all those discussions. We make that voting to have a consensus about what we're going to do. So we designing as the solution is right, but, but when we go to the testing, uh, it's not selling the solution uh, or making all those other people believe that the solution is good. We only want to present and be open to all the criticism that, that may be there and very good method the last method I would like to, to show you. It's very simple, like it's, it's self-explanatory, but it's very uh, fine to, to, to use with this kind of project. The feedback is given in a sentence, I like what I liked. I wish means what do you think could be improved and what if for the propositions, suggestions, ideas, uh, and so on. So. I think we can skip <laughs> presenting because uh, there's no one else we could present this idea to. Um, so as a uh, summary, what I would like to, to remind is that this design process is uh, based of, of the steps and each of the steps um, have different rules. The process is very simple, but we need to remind ourselves that when we are on the stage of the empathy, we do not run with the ideas for the solutions. When we are on the stage of the ideation, we do not run with the process of assessing those ideas. And if we think at any stage that we need to go back, we just simply go back because this is an iterative process. Um, I will, uh, you will have the access to this uh, presentation, of course, if you have any questions about the tools or methods, you can feel free to let me uh, know. Uh, because we have this small group, uh, I think this is uh, this is all what we can do. So we're finishing this first round. Uh, now we could uh, present the idea for the program, talk to people, present it, gather as much feedback as it's possible, gather all the criticism, all the questions, all the ideas, uh, not be upset about it, but just uh, think about it as all the additional information that we may receive and just improve the idea with all the other iterations. So it's finally something that makes economical or, an, or any non-monetary sense. This is how the process looks like. Thank you that you managed to, to make this. I know this is very uh, intensive and energy consuming. So thank you for your engagement. Do you have a question regarding the process or, uh, or today workshop? Will you share with us the presentation? And the second one is, is Myro uh, the license uh, program or do you have to pay for it to, for using it? You will have the presentation, Magda, that's right. Yes, I have the presentation, but the most important things, uh, I mean, some tips, some advice uh, is going to be elaborated in our ebook in the concept and also Hubert, uh, Hubert also agrees to put, the, put some insights, some, some tips when it comes to um, the development of uh, um, the process of uh, development, uh, the, the service. Um, so I think that the knowledge will be uh, available in the ebook, but also uh, I can share with you the presentation if uh, Hubert agrees. I mean, sure. from my point of view, it is important because you know there were like a lot of information. We were doing things, mm -hmm. and honestly saying, I mean the uh, title of this workshop was a little bit, uh, I'm not saying misleading, but uh, it was important for us to find out and learn uh, framework mm -hmm. so it, it was uh, this is what you this is what we did today and uh, with the presentation that would be easier to remind uh, or recall what we were discussing while for example implementing this kind of design thinking stuff in our company the the, the, the workshop was let's say content intensive there was a lot of tools and methods so uh, I, I wouldn't think that you remember all just by looking at this. So there's no problem 
I can provide you with the slides. And uh, about the Miro, I think there is free license, although I'm, I'm using a, a professional license. All right. with, with the free license, there's a bit less features like there was, there's no voting, for example, but to try it, there's there's a free license of, of, of Miro. And there's also Mural that's that, that that's worth checking for the online workshopping. Okay. And there's also Jamboard. I mean, Google tools. Jamboard. Yeah, Jamboard is free. Okay. Okay. okay so you. this is all from from me. Thank you again, Magda. Uh, thank you so much. I wanted to ask you if you have any more questions to Hubert or to me. Please don't hesitate to ask. If not, I would like to thank you for your active participation and thank you so much, Hubert, for uh, your um, for the transfer of, of knowledge. And as I said before, uh, through uh, these uh, this uh, series of workshops which uh, have been conducted so far um, and the whole knowledge uh, which was exchanged, uh, now uh, we can work on um, the final result of the project, which is going to be the concept, the ebook, uh, the concept for um, cross border cooperation. And also, Hubert um, admitted to, agreed to uh, elaborate uh, some tips and advice how to work, how to use. Uh, a given methods and tools uh, to develop uh, to develop to um, oh I missed the word um, how, to work, how to work on how to work on cross border um, cooperation how to develop the service okay so thank you once again for today's and also thank you thank you to thank uh, Kamil Krzywicki Kamil uh, um made interpretation for us and let's stay in touch and please have a look at our um cluster profile and also at uh, please have a look at our website uh in the middle of june we are going to publish the ebook concept with the whole knowledge and um, information also um transport also written by by Hubert so thank you once again thank you thank you, thank you guys really interesting stuff thank you Hubert thank you bye 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 thank you bye bye, bye, -bye. a ja na koniec powiem po polsku dzięki Hubert tak jest dziękujemy serdecznie dzięki cześć cześć